has six straight wins. Behind him in the backfield, Rocky Harvey and Antonio Harris both rushed for over 100 yards in the first two games of the season. <laughs> degrees under clear skies. They're expecting upwards of some 50,000 at Memorial Stadium here in Champaign, Illinois for the Golden Bears of California against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Hi, everybody, and good morning from Champaign. Steve Levy alongside Todd Christensen. We told you the Illini have won six straight dating back to last season. They've done it, Todd, by an average margin of victory of 29 points. The man mostly responsible, the ESPN, the magazine, rates him as the top four quarterbacks in the whole country. That's Kurt Kittner. And after struggling through an 0-11 campaign as a freshman quarterback, he has come on and been outstanding, leading them to a bowl victory last year. You see that number, 24 touchdown passes. Particularly impressive with that number, Steve, is the fact that he only threw five interceptions. High praise by his coach who said that maybe he's the best college quarterback he's ever been around. As for the Cal coaches, they look at Kittner and say, hey, in the first two games, he hasn't been touched at all, and all six touchdown passes he's thrown have been uncontested. They're going to try to change that today. Yeah, he's going to be contested today by arguably the best defensive end in college football and Andre Carter. Last year, Andre Carter put together a monster season with 20 tackles for loss, 10 sacks. In the first game alone against Utah, he had seven tackles, a sack, three tackles for loss, and a fumble recovery. He is an outstanding player and somebody that Illinois is going to have to be cognizant of. Dave Ryan will have more on him coming up. All the talk here in Champaign is about Michigan, but that's next week. Illinois Cal coming up, but first, back to Brian Kenny. Brian, thanks very much. A look at the man in his fourth season at Cal, Tom Homo. They come off a victory, making them 1-0, a quality win against Utah last week, 24-21. Actually had a 24-7 lead in the fourth and then hung on. And Ron Turner, who also serves as offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, most importantly the head coach in his fourth season. You look at that record, but again, keep in mind, that's after eight and four. So how about those first two seasons here at Illinois? The weather, we told you, 58 degrees, but the rest of the essentials, you see the humidity and the forecast for sunny, dipping down to mid-40s at nighttime here in the Champaign-Urbana area, but a high is expected to reach the low 70s. Cal has won the toss. Neil Adams to kick it away for Illinois. And we are underway from Champaign. LaShawn Ward will take it in the middle of the end zone. And Cal will open first and 10 from their own 20, led by Kyle Bowler. A horrendous start to a college career as a freshman a season ago. Looked sharp, though, in week one of this season. And the guys will try to put the ball in the hands of it. Our best buy lineups. Philip Pipersburg is the wide receiver on the first play from scrimmage a week ago. Bowler found Pipersburg for 45 yards, so we'll look for a quick strike early. And they open. Single setback with Joe Igbert behind Bowler. Two receivers out to the right. First and ten is our first play from scrimmage. Cal and Illinois. Bowler, quick drop and fires and connects with Pipersburg. It's not 45 yards, it's a couple. They'll take it and go from there. The offensive line for Cal looks something like this. They start a freshman, Nolan Bluntzer, filling in for an injured redeal at center. And the defensive line, Fred Wakefield, among the all-time leaders for Illinois in terms of sacks. They give him three on the completion of Pipersburg. Brings up a second down and seven. This time it's a handoff to Igbert. Nothing doing. He was dancing around for just a bit, but he was brought down by Jerry Schumacher, the linebacker for Illinois. Other linebackers for Illinois starting out. You see Mondrian Long, Robert Franklin, and Mike Young, the backers and the defensive backs. Trayvon Waller, the most experienced this bunch and the best. They got a they feel he has a chance to play on Sundays, as we like to say, Todd. Third down and six upcoming. Two receivers out to the right, two out to the left. Bowler fakes the handoff to Igbert. Bowler with time steps up and fires and overthrew his target, Sharon Arnold, by a country mile. And that'll bring up fourth down and a punt situation. 
Had a situation where he had him open in the flat, but just overthrew him. One of the things that the coaches have been trying to do with Kyle Bowler is try to harness his arm, give him a chance to get some touch. Everybody knows that he's got a gun. Nick Harris is back to punt. Harris suffered a concussion in the middle of the second half a week ago and had to be replaced. They say he's okay. And he starts as the punter for Cal. He gets an awful lot of work and is off to a busy start. A high spiraling punt that is caught at the 39-yard line by Eugene Wilson. They give him one on the return after a 37-yard punt. The Illinois offense is documented, led by Kurt Kittner. In the first two games, he's completing better than 70% of his passes. And he deals with an offense that is led behind him by Rocky Harvey, who starts. But we'll see an awful lot of Antonio Harris. As you look at the wide receivers, Jameel Cook's a good fullback who blocks for both tailbacks and can catch the football out of the backfield. So Illinois takes over on their first possession. Excellent field position at their own 40. And they'll go play action, and they're looking up top here. It's Kittner on first down, firing, underthrown and dropped, and a flag comes late. Greg Lewis came back to the quarterback, appeared to have it, and then dropped the football as the flag comes late. Andre Carter had the pressure on Kittner. We expect to see more of that all day. Harold Peterson was in coverage. He gets fooled on the out and not move, but at the very last, he sprints into him. I'm not so sure that this isn't one that they shouldn't pick up simply because of the fact that he it was a very catch ball. He didn't inhibit him in any way, but it is going to be 15 against the Bears. On the defense, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Take a look at Pearson here in coverage. There's going to be a little bit of an out move. You're going to see Lewis with a little bit of an out move and go. Hook and go pushes him out there. Now watch what happens at the end of the play. Now, does he inhibit him? That's the question. Actually, he did. He pushed him a little bit. Still, that was a catchable ball. A lot of times, the official will let that one go as incidental contact. Instead, they're rewarded for the route. It ends up beating him. And Illinois across midfield. Quitner, quick drop this time. Finds Rocky Harvey. The little tailback coming out of the backfield. And Harvey's got himself a nice gain. Down to the 25 after the pickup of 19 yards. The offensive line First for Illinois. Marcus Sullivan is the stud on this group. And it's a heavy-duty offensive line. We'll show you what you mean against this California defensive line led by Andre Carter. Biggest offensive line in the history of the university. The average six foot four and two thirds, 308 pounds. You can see there, that's quite a discrepancy, Steve. 52 pounds per man. Illinois obviously wants to take advantage of that with their 100 yard rushers. Here's Kittner on the drop. Steps up, looks to take off now. Eludes one tackler and can't get around a second one. Kurt Kittner showing off the pocket presence there. He's brought down at the 16-yard line by Scott Fujita. Linebackers for Cal. Scott Fujita is the main man, especially because his backup player, Jape, is injured. And if, if he would go down, that would be big trouble for Cal. And there you see the defensive backs. Chitty Awoma is the star of the DBs for Cal. Another first down, very impressive drive for Illinois. First time they have the ball, and Jones of the pocket presence. They say the first guy rarely gets a piece of him. Really did. Did a nice job of getting out. He's not a blazer, but he knows when he's got to go. On first down and 10 now. From the Cal 16. The handoff here, Jameel Cook, the big fullback. He says he'd like to get five or six carries a game, five or six catches. He's got one. He's down to the 10-yard line. It looked like Jacob Wazdrup had him in the back in the backfield, was able to drop him, but instead Cook, with his low center of gravity at six feet tall and about 220 pounds, takes him on shoulder to shoulder. And look at that. That's great feet for a fullback. Normally you don't see the fullback that agile, but that is the strength of Jameel Cook. He is somebody that can catch the ball out of the backfield with nine catches already in the season, Steve. Second and short now from the 10 yard line two receivers out to the left Kittner will go play action from there and his pass just led the receiver Josh Whitman the tight end a bit too much it falls incomplete will bring up a third down and four Dewey Hale on the coverage doing a nice job preventing Whitman from getting to the spot where he was supposed to come up with the ball one of the things that does not bode well here Steve for California is they're not getting a lot of pressure right now on the quarterback and of course the byproduct of that is they have to be back on their heels because of what you documented earlier both runners with 100 yard games in the first two games of the campaign. Kittner brings him up. One wide receiver split out to the right. He'll pitch it out to the left. 
to Cook again, the fullback, and Cook rumbles through a couple of people down to the five-yard line, and that's good for a first down, so it will be first and goal. Scott Fujita made the tackle for Cal. You think about what Cal's dealing with here, Todd. The time difference has to be a factor. They pushed up their meetings to 6.30 a.m. local time in California, trying to get adjusted to central time zone, and also they're playing on turf. For many players, first time ever. I thought it interesting when we were talking with Tom Homo, he made the point that he didn't think that was that big a deal as you get a chance to see Andre Carter who up to this point has not been a factor, but I think it is. It's very different on your legs. It plays faster and you have to deal with it, but up, and up to this point, obviously, it's an advantage for the Illini. Antonio Harris now checks in, replacing Rocky Harvey. Here's Kittner rolling to his right with a man in his face. It's Josh Whitman wide open. Touchdown, Illinois. A very impressive first drive starting with great field position from their own 40. And that's great play calling on the part of Ron Turner. He goes with a misdirection. So many times when you get down that close to the goal line, the idea is that, okay, we'll plow it in two times. If it doesn't work, we'll go with play action on third down. Instead, he goes with the play action right away on first down. California is completely full. Kittner puts it right on the money to his tight end. Steve Fitz is on to attempt the extra point for Illinois. He's their punter and their place kicker. The snap is handled, and Fitz boots it through. Six plays, 60 yards, and Illinois on the board. They have a 7-0 lead over Cal here in Champaign. Kurt Kittner in the Illini offense. They're at it early. They're averaging 42 points after the first two games. And there you see the drive, and it was a quickie. Neil Adams puts it in the air, and it's LaShawn Ward back for it. And this time he'll carry it out, and he brings it out to the 24-yard line. So Cal with slightly improved field position, and we'll get our second look on the afternoon on Kyle Bowler. You know, we documented the fact that both programs went with freshman quarterbacks initially. Of course, Kyle Bowler really struggled last year. And Kittner in his freshman year, you can take a look at the numbers. And really, if that's any indication, Steve, good things are ahead for the Bears in Berkeley because Bowler certainly outshone Kittner, at least in that comparison. Bowler barking out the signals. Two receivers out to the right. Salim Muhammad is in the game, replacing Igbert. And Joseph Etchema has the ball. They went with two tailbacks there. Virginia Tech in action this afternoon. Let's check in with Brian Kenny. Steve, thank you very much. This one, a big blowout last year. Virginia Tech and Rutgers, it was 58 to 20. This time, it took a while, but Michael Vick scampering here. This is the usual from him. He got 20 on this. Lee Suggs later ran it in from seven yards out. It's 7 0. All right, Brian, thank you. It's Etchema again on the ball carry. And they're about to bring up a third down and five or so for the first down. <laughs> you know, it, it must show how good Michael Vick is if Brian Kenny refers to that as the usual. The guy spins around on one hand, a couple of 360s, makes five guys misses. Ah, oh, ho-hum. I tell you, he is some special athlete. Fun to watch. Worth the price of admission. Third down and six, they call it. Here's Boulder. Quick little inside screen. Hit Sharon Arnold, but it looks to be short of the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Schumacher makes a good play just tripping him up. Otherwise, he would have had the first down. Number 42 is able to get in the middle of the screen and drop it. That's a great play. And again, Nick Harris comes on to punt. We told you he is used plenty. In fact, he averages 83 punts per year. That is more than any other punter in the nation. And we're less than five minutes into this game, and Harris is on for his second punt of this morning, turning into the afternoon. I'm not sure that's a record they want to break. <laughs> right. Gets it away with very little wow. pressure. And wow. A tremendous punt. And it'll take a cow bounce right away. And look at this. It is down at the two, maybe the one yard line. A 64 yard punt wow. for Nick Harris, who was ninth in the nation last season. Of course, his cover team as well in net punting. What a punt from Harris. Well, there's more great college football for you coming up on ESPN2 at 6 Eastern, Indiana and Kentucky. Then back here on ESPN at 7.30, Josh Booty leads Auburn in this battle for SEC West Supremacy. LSU on Auburn and then 13th ranked Alabama will take on Southern Miss. Now, for those of you in the audience who are a little older, you remember a guy from Nebraska by the name of Johnny Rogers. Freddie Millens is the closest thing I've seen to that, coming out of the backfield, returning kicks, catching the ball. Very, very exciting.
Here's Illinois deep in their own territory. Kittner doesn't care. He's firing away. And it looked like there was some offensive contact made by Greg Lewis, the receiver, on Harold Pearson, the cornerback. And I know what you always say if that's the other way around. That's pass interference against the defense. But that's great coverage. He's downfield with him stride for stride. And as a corner, you get no respect because the only time you ever show up in the stats is when you get beat. That was great coverage. Second down and 10 from the four-yard line. Kittner not afraid to fire, regardless of where on the field they are. Because you can do that when you have a tremendous running game as well. Out of the eye, both backs starting in the end zone. It's Antonio Harris. Barely makes the five-yard line. And after that great punt by Harris, Cal could really use a defensive stand here. But you know what, Steve? Don't look for Illinois to be necessarily conservative. You saw with the first play, they go up top. Get a chance to see Nick Harris. Now, you can't... I mean, he's got a great leg. He turns the ball over. But here is the good fortune. It turns over so much, you can see the nose of the ball right there ends up getting the back spin. Well, that's just that's a terrific catch, a terrific stop, and of course, as a punter, you're just thrilled when you get something like that. Great net. Well, we told you he had a concussion in the game, the second half last week. It appears to be just fine. Here's Jameel Cook, the fullback, and he's very close to a first down. And that's unfortunate for Cal because it appeared that they had him stopped at the line of scrimmage. And I find it interesting, Steve, that the ball is in the hands of Cook so much. When we talk so much about their tailbacks, Harvey and Harris, it just goes to show how creative Ron Turner is. In terms of the idea, you just can't put him down. You can't catch him because he's so unpredictable. Gives, they do give him the spot on the first down for Jameel Cook. We mentioned what a fine receiver Cook is as well. He led the team in touchdown catches a season ago, five of them. Not bad for a fullback. And he had a bit of a smile on his face and talking to us yesterday. Say, hey, you watch for Coach. They're going to call my number a little bit more today. And so far, they certainly have. Fresh set of downs. On first and 10 from the 14-yard line. Handoff up the middle to Rocky Harvey. And there's your great changeup, right? You give it to the big back Cook, then you go to the little guy, 5'9", 185-pound Rocky Harvey. Well, I pointed, out the I pointed out the fact that Coach Ron Turner, who is the offensive coordinator, is just shaking, shaking things up. And you see Andre Carter. He's got to be a little bit confused. He doesn't know what to do. Am I pass rushing here? They're running a trap. Guy goes in motion. They go inside, outside. And Ron Turner has a great game plan. Second down and three now from the 21. It's Harvey again. Not much there. Great. Wasdorp is the man who has been really tough inside, but in that case, he comes from the outside anticipating, I guess, pass rush. Six foot one, 255 pounds. Not really big for a defensive lineman, but extremely quick. Take a look at how quickly he gets in, is able to knife in and get a piece of Harvey and drop him in the backfield. Great play by 94. Wasdorf is the guy who said, hey, you know, Cal hasn't been on ESPN since 94. This is the game, the early morning game that we always watched for years. Hey, now we're in it. Let's not mess it up. Wasdorf and find Cal to find themselves down 7-0. Kittner, strong arm throw in and out of the hands of Greg Lewis. Dewey Hale, the safety, is the one that separates him from the ball. That's a very catchable ball, and of course, you're frustrated if you're a quarterback, but Hale gives the sign of, that's right, not in my area. Good stand for the defensive Cal. They're only giving up the one first down, and now they should have pretty good field position, Steve. Steve Fitz is on to punt. He already connected on the extra point. He's the first to do both for Illinois. She's Ken Miller handled both kicking chores back in 1953. Chidi Awoma is on the return. Picks up four on the punt return after the 41-yard punt by Steve Fitz. You can see more great college football by ordering ESPN Game Plan on pay-per-view. Watch 100 extra college football games this fall. Up to 10 games each Saturday. So if you're a college football fan, this is a must. Call your local cable company, Correct TV, at 1-800-333-DISH. So Cal, in their third series, they've got some good field position opening up from their own 42-yard line. Igber is the lone setback behind Kyle Bowler. And Bowler is firing, and that pass is complete to the fullback, Kiala Kiana Aina. I'm sorry, what'd you say? 
<laughs> I was waiting for you to say that one at first. I even got it right, I think. This is you did indeed. And Kiana Aina, nice swim move. He's man for man with the in, with the outside backer, and that always is a mismatch for the tight end. At least it should be. Does a nice job of escaping and making the catch and moving the sticks. Hand off to Joe Igbert. They're across midfield, and we get an update from Brian Kenny. Steve, we go back to Virginia Tech and Rutgers. Uh, they're on the board one more time. Here are the Hokies, Michael Vick. This time, full oh, sweet flip pass. 17 yards to Emmett Johnson. 14-0 Hokies. All right, Brian, thanks. 7-0 here, Illinois over Cal. But the Golden Bears have the football at the 45-yard line. Here's Bowl. Looked like he might have changed the play at the line of scrimmage. He passes behind the intended receiver. It's picked off. Bobby Jackson on the far sideline. Cuts it to the 30. Bobby Jackson down to the 20. And they say he stepped out of bounds to the 22-yard line. A 41-yard return by Bobby Jackson. It went off the hands of the freshman receiver, Chase Lyman. And that is unfortunate, Steve, as you pointed out. It was a little bit behind. And again, the other thing with regards to it also being behind, it's not one that you had to throw that hard. He just throws the heck out of the ball, and he's only 10 yards away, and it's behind. And, of course, this is good fortune on the part of Illinois. Who anticipates this kind of a bounce? Right to him. Unable to make the tackle, and up the field he goes. Jackson does a great job of open field running, making his brother and father proud, who are also a part of the Illinois family. Brother Mark, a defensive back as well, and his dad is the team's wide receiver. But this is what Illinois does, folks. Last season, plus 13 in turnover, second in the nation. And they continue that. There seems to be some confusion. There's a flag on the play. Wow. Talk about your late flag. See, wow. nobody was paying attention to that. Boy, oh boy, what a turnaround that's going to be. There were no Illinois players on the field at all, and Cal had already had their defense on the field. So neither team was aware. Yeah, exactly. Well, now this is an interesting. Now they're aware. I was just going to say this is an interesting reaction by Ron Turner. Usually, you'll see the head coach if things don't go his way like that, screaming at the official, wanting to know what the deal is. But he's very calm and collected and said, "Okay, all right, that's fine. Let's just get back on the field and play the game." You don't see that very often. These are Big Ten officials, led by referee Dennis Lipsky, this afternoon. That's a huge turnaround. Steve. <laughs> So Cal gets the football back. Can we get the official call on the penalty? Yeah, yeah, offside. Offsides. So Cal will take over and get the football back after the flag. Second down and six from the 40. Here's Igber, the ball carrier, and he's down to the 35. We'll see if Cal can take advantage. Bowler runs over to the sideline while the play is going on. Getting some instruction from the coaching staff. Evidently, he saw something. So this will be interesting. Let's take a look at this play. Maybe they're going to go up the field here. Cal, as we mentioned earlier, goes with the no huddle. And Illinois said they would go with the defensive hang huddle for the no huddle. Going up. Up top to the corner. And a tremendous defensive play. Eugene Wilson, the coverage on Philip Pipersburg. Wilson got up at six feet 185, making the play. We had to know that when Boulder went to the sidelines, he had seen something. He thought he had him isolated, which of course he did. But again, that's a great play on the part of Wilson going stride for stride. The big thing now is, is everybody is aware. You got the five nine, five ten corners, the six two, six three wide receivers. You want to throw it up and out, jump them. Wilson so, says not this time. Sorry, Todd, on that replay, that was a good ball. That was a good ball by Bowler. Just a tremendous defensive play. Joseph Echema on the carry. Maybe at the 35. Pickup of inches if they give him that as the clock winds towards six minutes left of the first quarter. Illinois scoring a touchdown on their very first drive, but nothing doing since then. This is going to be a significant third down for a lot of reasons, Steve, and that is, is that I'd, I'd like a drop play here. I'd like a drop play simply because of the fact that it's going to be difficult on third and ten to get something, and you are just on the cusp of field goal range. Here's Bowler. Two receivers out to his left. He looked like he almost dropped the snap. Pumps and fires off a player and dropped. 
James Smith had it go all in and out of his hands, popped in the air, and very nearly intercepted by Illinois. I'm not sure if anybody got a piece of this, Steve, but it looked like this is a very catchable ball, and this is what you do when you got a guy with a great arm. Put him in a position to where he can throw in between the seams. He did that, and Smith just couldn't come up with it, and obviously I was wrong because now Cal comes in to punt. Nick Harris, the early star for Cal, after that tremendous punt in his last outing. Let's see if he can get it out of bounds inside the 10 here. Harris set his own 50, and he'll let it go from the 45. High, spiraling kick. Wow. And Cal will down it inside the five. A 29-yard punt. It's down nicely by Eddie Garcia. The punter, the star so far for Cal. We'll be right back. And there, a look at the punter and the star so far for Cal. Punts of 37, 64, and 29 yards. And 29 might not sound all that good, but it's pinned Illinois back to the four yard line. And what's particularly impressive, Steve, is he got a career average of around 44 in addition to all those pooch punts that he has. A lot of teams have two different punters. It shows that he not only has the big leg, but he has touch, too. Quick hitter to the fullback, Jamil Cook. And he's across the five-yard line. Does Harris remind you, the punter remind you of anybody? Because evidently he reminded Ray Guy of himself. He went to Ray Guy's camp, punting camp, and, uh, and, and Guy was astonished that he saw some of himself in Harris. Well, I, I remember re Ray Guy vividly as I used to look at him between my legs for four years when I was the long snapper of the Raiders, and he, he, he hit some satellites, so <laughs> until... <laughs> I'll wait to pass judgment on that one. Here's Cook now carrying out again. Now you have to ask yourself the question here. Here we build up the fact that both Harris and Harvey, right. you know, coming in this game, hey man, 100 yard games back to back. They're going to tear him up, and now all of a sudden Cook is the guy getting the ball. Bring up a third down and five from the nine yard line. Cook so far, five carries for 26 yards. And he said he'd be happy with five or six carries. Well, he's gotten in the first quarter. Here's Kittner off play action, rolling to his right, under pressure, fired. And the ball would look like a catchable ball to the tight end Brian Hodges. Good defensive coverage there by Cal, stripping him of the football. We mentioned Andre Carter. What they're trying to do, tight end takes him down, and then there's a guard waiting on him. They want to do what they can not to allow him single coverage. Great job by the Illini, because we have yet to call his name thus far, Steve. Steve Fitz is punting from his own end zone, and he'll get it away. Chitty Owoma for Cal has it at the 44, spins towards the 40, and we have two, maybe three flags on the field. A punt of 34 yards. Iwoma, a return of just two. Yeah, if you're going to clip somebody, don't do it right in front of the official. And that's really costly simply because of the fact that when he had to sprint up and catch the ball, you knew he wasn't going to get much anyway on the short punt. Again, in fairness, these are young people and they're excited. But boy, what great field position would be at the 42. Now they're going to have to move him back 10. Illegal block in the back. On the receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. 10 yard penalty against Cal. With the penalty, we'll step out. 4.05 to play in the first quarter. The Illini leading 7 0. We all need batteries. Are you getting this? Here she comes. Oh, she's beautiful. SPN Sunday Night Football. It's football after dark. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan from Champaign, Illinois. The Illini a 7-0 lead for the second consecutive time. Cal starts in better field position, better than their own 40-yard line here at the 47. Last two Illini possessions, they've started at their own four. Ouch. And yet Cal has yet to be able to take advantage. All the breaks so far go in the Golden Bears' way. Joe Igber on the handoff. He's shy of midfield. Pick up a maybe two on the play. And don't forget, in addition, you mentioned the breaks, that interception that gets called back because of an offside. So Cal could be buried at this point. Right now, they're only down seven. Cal again in the no huddle. Interesting because the Illinois coaching staff talked about Cal milking the play clock, and yet Cal talks about how quickly they actually get the plays off. 
Some late substitution motion, and there's some movement there. Might have been motion, motion by Mark Wilson, the right tackle that caused Fred Wakefield to jump, and we'll see. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Wilson, the least experienced of that front line for Cal, the redshirt freshman from MacArthur, California. Well, again, with people moving all over the place in sets and he's trying to hear the quarterback, that's a struggle. And Tim Kish is well aware that they've got a youngster up front. Playing tackles a freshman, that's a tough gig. You're out on an island. Second down and 13 after the hanky. And here's Bowler. Steps up, feeling the pressure, and gets it off. A bullet little pass to Sharon Arnold. Arnold carrying, and he's brought down at the 41, and it's good for a first down after the pickup of 15. Nice Sharon catch. Arnold. That's a nice catch and a good athletic play on the part of Kyle Bowler. So we get a chance to see something that you had pointed out, Steve, with regards to the time factor, the time between plays for Cal. When we talked about them milking the clock, we made reference to the idea that maybe they're the Princeton of football, but in reality, one of the things that they've been doing here, they've been hustling a lot this time. Here's Igbert trying to change it up with a run up the middle, down to the 35-yard line. And that'll bring up a second down opportunity. Now you see him sprint back just like Arnold did. Just the opposite of last week against Utah, when a lot of times when you looked at the play clock, it was 5-4-3-2 and down. Now suddenly they're hustling. They want to get as many offensive he plays as possible, it appears, here in the first quarter. The advantages to hustling are obvious. Try to catch the defense in a situation they don't want to be in. What about the advantages of taking the time on the play clock? That pass is batted away. James Smith, the intended receiver. You mentioned the Princeton of football and maybe just cut down the total snaps in the football game to keep milking the, the 25 second play clock well that, that I, I thought that would be the theory considering the fact that at least up to this point you'd have to acknowledge that Illinois is superior physically but Cal evidently doesn't feel that way they feel like they can get down the field use 25 seconds there in between plays Igbert cuts right, cuts left, and is buried. Igbert hit and hit hard squarely by Muhammad Abdullah, the free safety. One of the reasons for the success of this play is the fact that they decide to come with the bullets blitz. And what I mean by that is the inside backers come to try and fill the gap. They do that. Igbert is able to get to the outside. First down for Cal. Abdullah, a candidate for the Thorpe Award, which annually goes to the top defensive back in the nation. Igber has six carries for 26 yards so far. Firing, and it's complete. It's Chase Lyman. And that should be good for a first down, for Robert Franklin brought him down. Lyman, one of two true freshman playing wide receiver and seeing plenty of playing time for Cal. And Chase Lyman, number 81, actually lined up there, Steve, as a tight end, and for whatever reason, they didn't account for him. He just went out to the flat, and he was wide open. Cal definitely has Illinois on its heels here. Well, it just took some time to wake up a little bit. Get the time clocks adjusted. And here come the Golden Bears. Little draw play to Salim Muhammad. And he's down to the 10-yard line. Well, of course, one of the things, as you pointed out, Steve, is that this does not afford Illinois the opportunity to get their specialty people in. And so, as a result, in the secondary in particular, you've got a defensive back like a free safety or a strong safety who's covering a wide receiver. That's the mismatch that Cal wants. And, of course, that also spreads things out for the runner. And at some point, among all the craziness, I would think a defense has to say, hey, you know what, let's just do what we do well here and not get out of control with the substitutions. That looked like it was off the hands of James Smith, and it could have been six. Now, James Smith is wearing gloves. He's one of the few that does wear gloves for the Cal Bears. We'll get into that a little bit later. But one of the things here is, again, we talk about the touch of Bowler. Bowler threw that ball. That was an absolute laser. And, of course, Smith has had a hard time. That's about the third time we've gone to him when he had what appeared to be catchable balls, and he wasn't able to come up with it. Cal, you see the drive. They'd like to convert on third down. Just one of four so far on third down today. Again, all the last second shifting in motion. Now they set. And the quick screen out to the left was looking to get it into the hands of Igber out in the flat. They get one for five on third down conversions. Cal will just try to pick up three and get on the board. Still a pretty good drive. Even though it wasn't long distance, it has to give them a little bit of confidence. Mark Christian Jensen will come out to attempt 
the 27 yard field goal one of two so far on the season return LDS missionary from Leipzig Germany from Pleasant Grove Utah I had to mention that because that town's about five miles from Hoare Island where's that home address again Todd Tricky little snap in place and it is no good kicking was a real problem for Cal last season in fact four of their first five field goal attempts hit one of the uprights they didn't just miss four out of the first five last year hit the upright this one just missed wide left well this is not a very good snap Harris does what he can to get the ball down take a look it's right at about his knee he comes across he can't get the spin the runner is the kicker is already into his motion the result he just can't get it up and of course get, get it between the uprights the snapper I believe is Wasdorp is Wasdrop rather the defensive tackle number 94 for Cal I'm a big fan of the fact, Steve, that you have to have a snapper that doesn't play, so that's all he does. No pads in the hands, no sweat, no nothing. Here's Rocky Harvey for Illinois. And Harvey takes on Chidi Iwoma, the defensive back, and actually pushes him out of bounds. That has to be somewhat demoralizing for Cal coming away with zero points. It really does, especially when it's a chip shot. If he misses from 45, you say no big deal. But anytime you've got kicks inside the 40, they're expected to be made. That's about a 95% proposition. Cal's offense, though, has been, besides the fact of putting points on the board, which is the only part that counts, the offense has been rather impressive after last season. The offense was dead last in nearly every category in the Pac-10. They were led by their defense, which is on the field now trying to contain Rocky Harvey. Let's go to Dave Ryan on the field. Dave. Steve Rocky Harvey and Antonio Harris are very good friends off the field. Now, we talked about their record-setting production and the back-to-back -back games. It's a matter of serious competition between these two guys. Rocky tells us touchdowns aren't the big issue. Total yards, that's something entirely different. He wants to have all 93 of the yards. Seven yards, that goes to Harris. Anything in close, and he's the power back. All right, it's Harvey again, Dave, out trying the right side. Brought down by Jason Smith, who was a late starter at linebacker for Cal in place of John Clutch. Well, he's a quick starter there, getting in the backfield, dropping, dropping the runner, and he looks to be in a little bit of pain as he goes to the sidelines. Again, you can see him being a little bit uncomfortable. I think this is a byproduct of something you documented earlier, Steve, that being playing on the turf. Dave asked the coach about practicing on the turf, which a lot of teams do in anticipation of a turf game. And Coach Homo said, no way. Don't want to put them on the turf anytime they don't have to be there. That Kittner pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage by Scott Fujita. Scott Fujita just coming off neck surgery. They weren't sure if he was even going to be able to play this year, but he was able to overcome it, and there he gets up in the air. Ricochet, they couldn't quite come up with it. But again, it's good for Cal because they're frustrating Kittner a little bit. Kittner so far just two of seven for 24 yards and since the touchdown pass he's 0 for 4. Hooking up with Josh Whitman on the touchdown earlier the only score of the game so far. Final 17 seconds of the first quarter. Kittner from the shotgun under pressure fires and could not connect with his target Aaron Moorhead the sophomore. Here comes Carter from the outside. Nice move. Almost there. Almost there, but not. They're making him go the long way around. Give credit on that play. To Sony Pachos. Steve Fitz is upended. The punter, LaShawn Ward. Steve, that's got to be the halo, doesn't it? I mean, he wasn't. There's no way that he gave him the two yards. Gain of one on the return for Ward. Well, we'll see what the call is. You would think it would be the halo. I gotta give credit to Ward and Iwoma. You know, both times when they're catching punts, they're fearless. I mean, it seems like those should have been fair catches, but they go after it. Four seconds to play here in the first quarter. And once again, something that you pointed out earlier, Steve, this drive, too, is going to start outside the 40-yard line for Cal. They couldn't ask for better field On position. contact interference on a kicking team. Two-yard belt violation. The penalty will be enforced from the spotted foul. Five yards. First up. 
All right. In other words, Belt Halo. Come on. The Halo. <laughs> Trayvon Waller was the player who did not give the necessary yardage. Waller, the real star on that Illinois secondary. Their coaches were telling us he might be their best prospect on the squad to play on Sunday. Well, he's one of the guys that everybody wants. He's a six foot three inch cornerback. They want a cornerback that's rangy and tall, but they're hard to find because as soon as they get that tall, they're not quick enough. But they say that Waller is the guy, that he's got the goods. And a junior college transfer as well. El Camino College in L.A. So Cal takes over, first and 10 from their 43. That's right, tremendous field position, yet they have zero points to show for it. Quick screen out, and forced out of bounds after the catch by Pana Femina. We'll step out. Quarter number one is in the book. 7 nothing, Illinois. Cal and Illinois in their first meeting since 1974. You look at the average field position, Cal at their own 37, that's great, but it hasn't helped them. They haven't scored yet, Todd. Now you got to give credit to Illinois' defense. 23 plays for Cal, only 86 yards up to that point. They'll take that every time, and Cal, or excuse me, Illinois is not known as a great defensive team, Steve. Second and six now from the 47-yard line. And they hand it off to Igber. Whoa. And he squirts his way across midfield before Muhammad Abdullah put the brakes on him. This is just me, Steve, and I realize that I'm waxing a little bit nostalgic, but anybody that reminds me of Barry Sanders, watch the feet. Beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. Inside, in, out. Oh, I love that. And that's one of the advantages of being on the AstroTurf. You can make cuts like that. Sometimes you can't do that on the grass. And if you're a, a Cal fan, a fan of Joe Egbert, don't buy number six jerseys. He's a good guy, but he likes to change his uniform number every single year. Here for now is number six. Joe Egbert on the carry again. Well, Tim Kish was able to get the people in that he wanted to right at the end, Steve. Normally what happens is that on third down you can't do it, but he decided, you know what, we're going to give it a shot. He ran everybody in, he had people in the right position, and even though they went with the trap play, it was stuffed. The result now, Cal, three and out. Here's Nick Harris. He's been simply brilliant so far to punt it away for Cal. Already his fourth punt of the day. Eugene Wilson is back deep for Illinois. Harris gets it away, and another beauty of a punt. Let's see where it stops. Are you Unbelievable. kidding me? Are you kidding another me? Great Ball's cow down. bounce. Are you kidding me? 46-yard punt. Tiger Woods with a backspin. It's unbelievable. We'll see what they can do after the punt. We get you to Brian Kenny with more on Ole Miss. Brian? Thank you, Steve. Ole Miss and Vandy. We go to the SEC, and Deuce McAllister taking on the Commodore defense. Talk about cutbacks. This guy makes one, goes back outside, and he's busting loose. 50-yard touchdown run. 6-0 Ole Miss over Vanderbilt. Steve? All right, Brian, thanks very much. Nick Harris having himself a ball game. You remember last year, you and I were down there in Oxford, Mississippi. Remember that opening kickoff, and Deuce McAllister That's takes right. a yard deep and goes the distance. He's special. He's somebody that by the – I'm thinking that in the next four or five games, he's going to move up in that top five for the Heisman running. I really think so. I think you made that point last season. You were a season ahead of yourself. Even. <laughs> and here is Illinois again, starting from the shadow of their own goalpost. The last three possessions for Illinois, they've started at the four before, and here from the three. Now, you don't want to make the punter the story of the team, but so far, Harris has been for Cal. And you'll love this about Nick Harris. He's one of the fastest players on this team. Oh, come punter. on. Come on. Yeah. I didn't even write down the speed numbers in the 40 because I know you don't believe in that. So don't believe the 40 <laughs> numbers anybody gives us. But we were told he is among the fastest players on the Cal But team. if he plays for Cal, they don't time him in the 40. That's right. Something else will get it. That's kind of scary. It is. Here's Kittner now under heavy pressure. And Kittner will go down. Sean Paga for the safety. What a great story Sean Paga is. Comes to Cal, decides he wants to play football, but he says, you know what? I'm a Kiwi man. My thing, my thing is rugby. And so he takes time out, plays on the team. They win national championships. Now he comes back as a great pass rusher. This is a big play for Cal. 
Safeties are cool. I just love safeties because they're so out of the ordinary, and Paga has every reason to every reason to celebrate. And if the offense can't get on the board, the defense will do it. Seven to two. Here's Dave Ryan. Well, guys, Sean Paga, as Todd mentioned a moment ago, loved to play rugby. He was on the World Cup team that played in Ireland for the USA. Born in New Zealand, as Todd said. Now, he really likes the combination of both sports. He likes football because there's contact. He likes the continuous play of soccer when he's playing wrestle, when he's playing uh, rugby, and he likes some wrestling is there in there as well. He really likes the camaraderie of rugby, though, because on the road, you stay at your opponent's houses, and afterwards, everybody goes out, has a good time, has dinner together. That doesn't happen in college football. <laughs> All right, Dave, thanks. And there's another thing, too, about that camaraderie. In football, of course, they huddle. In rugby, they scrum. Right. How can you not force your relationships when you're in the middle of a scrum? <laughs> you have to. Well, there's the star. You pointed it out, Steve, in the first quarter. He said the star for Cal up to this point is the punter. That's very rare. But he has been outstanding in pinning Illinois in absolutely atrocious field position. Steve Fitz is set to kick it away. This is the free kick. He will punt it from his own 20-yard line. Can't use two. And it is LaShawn Ward returning from the 40. And out to the 50. The and game. across midfield, LaShawn Ward. So Illinois will finally get some good starting field position. Well, of course, you're thinking to yourself, Steve, when this game started, oh, my gosh, Illinois just went right down the field, scored the touchdown, no-brainer. This has the potential of a blowout. Since that time, they have struggled. And Ron Turner, I don't, I don't know if it's so much play calling as the fact that California's defense, which last year in the Pac-10, Steve, was first in almost every significant category. You can see since then, 16 plays, 28 yards. Got to give a lot of credit to Cal's defense. And it helps when your head coach is a former defensive coordinator like Tom Holman. So the first possession and the other numbers were the combined totals for the last four possessions. Let's not forget the penalty on Bobby Jackson's interception. That might have been the key play. And it was 7-0. Illinois might have been headed on their way towards a blowout. Salim Muhammad is the ball carrier. Dave Ryan was talking about Sean Paga. There's a happy man, all right. What's that? You know what? But he's got to learn. It's a high mom thing. You got to go, we're number one. <laughs> you know, that cheers right, mate. That doesn't really play well, here in the States. The coaching staff <laughs> told us about Paga that, that some of the football stuff is, is not first nature to him. Right, right. And, and maybe that's one of those things. Doesn't realize it's high mom. We're number one. <laughs> Still picking up some of the football sense. Looked pretty good on that safety, though. Muhammad again, the ball carrier, trying the left side. 12 minutes to play here in the first half. Your typical seven to two ball game. Well, I just think that's one of those exciting things, and one of the great things about being in college. You know, nowadays the multiple sport athlete is relatively common, but usually it's something like football and baseball. Dave documents the guys in rugby and soccer and anything else. It must be fun to have that level of energy. Third down and four. The crowd trying to rally the Illinois defense. Kyle Bowler. Two receivers to each side, bowl of the pass. Across the middle, in and out of the hands of Chase Lyman. And we were told about the young Cal receivers, Lyman and McCarthy. They go get the football for you. They play hard. They work hard. Bowler's had some drops. Chase Lyman and Curran comes out of both their hands. And again, you know, it's one thing to talk about that, but I can still remember the contrast. They talk about this young man being the best recruit to come out of Southern California since John Elway. I remember Dan Reeves, when receivers were complaining about John Elway throwing the ball to her, he said, hey, you're the ones that are gonna have to make the adjustment, not him. Bowler is firing the ball. Tremendous velocity. Here's the punt from Nick Harris. Can he do it again? Let's see, it bounces and it will drop at the 10 yard line can't get enough for the putter for cal that's 30 <laughs> and they'll take it the golden bears trail by five here in the second this game is rated e for everyone State Farm insurance. seven to two illinois leads california the illini two and oh cal one and oh and Illinois getting very familiar with the end zone, but it's their own end zone. Their last five drive, their average start has been their own eight-yard line. I'd like to get familiar with Rocky the other end zone. As Rocky Harvey carries the ball out to the 10-yard line. Jacob Wasdorp on the tackle. Tackle made by the number 45, Chris Paul. 
Defensive coordinator Lynn Satensic for California said, listen, we absolutely have to stop the run or at least slow it down. You know, they've been averaging 270 plus yards per game and up to this point they've done a great job of doing just that. No gain for Harvey on second and ten. We'll try him again. And again, no gain for Harvey. I guess this is where you shouldn't be as, as presumptuous as I was to say what I'm saying. Right there, you can see there's the defensive quarter. Satensic. He was talking about the fact that I said, is this a game where you put eight guys in the box? He said, what eight guys? Yeah. So we're putting in nine and ten in the box, and our corners are going to be on an island. But up to this point, it's been effective, and except for the first drive, as we documented, Steve, Illinois has struggled offensively. Todd, their last 14 carries on the ground, just 29 yards. So they try the pass. Greg Lewis is on the receiving end of the Kurt Kittner pass. GD Uoma made the stop. I was just about to say, Uoma does a great job here because he drops him right in his tracks. Here's the slant. The idea is he breaks the tackle and gets the first down. And said Uoma drops him right there, two yards short. Once again, great field position on tap for Cal. Uoma is back to return the punt, and he'll run up and receive it at the 46 of Illinois. And again, Cal will take over with unbelievable field position. And they'll start at the 43-yard line after the 28-yard punt. It's more great college football for you next Saturday. Coverage begins at 11 a.m. Eastern with College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. And they're all excited, folks, here in Champaign, Urbana. They think they got a shot of seeing Chris Lee and Kirk right here at Memorial Stadium. And then we'll be on the road for Minnesota, Purdue, Michigan, Illinois. We'll follow that. And it's a good time to be in the Big Ten because it means you got a pretty good shot of being in the top 20 around the country. Cal again, tremendous field position, this time at the Illinois 43. And here's Bowler, hits a wide open Chase Lyman. And it's complete, very close to another first down. Let's get an update now from Brian Kenny. Steve, home opener for TCU and Ladanian Tomlinson here. Take it on Northwestern. Casey Printer's rolling out. Sweet play to Cedric James. And right now, TCU leading Northwestern 17 to 7. Thank you, Brian. Tomlinson, the top returning rusher in the nation. They give him the first down, fresh set of downs. Timeout is called by Cal. The first timeout taken. They don't need a timeout. They're having a great time. 7-2 Illinois. Here at Illinois, you saw a shot of the campus, the Illini, and the University of Illinois, the home to the largest public university library in the world. As Cal takes their time setting up the offense to get onto the field, Illinois sitting back and waiting for them. First down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Kyle Bowler under center. Off the play action, Bowler looking up top across the middle. And some good coverage there. Was looking for the speed burner, Philip Pipersburg. And he had some mustard on that one as well. He's been a little bit inaccurate, Steve. This is what they call the skinny post down the field. Good play action fake. Now watch where the ball ends up. I mean, that, that's, that's a serious overthrow right there. Bowler again, setting things up from the line of scrimmage without the huddle. And a quick drop and the screen to the man in motion, Hana Fa'amina. And it was off his hands and dropped Bobby Jackson on the cover. We've seen a lot of balls in and out of the hands of Cal. We talked about the velocity and the mustard on Bowler. Is that on the quarterback or is that on the receivers? Well, in that case, that's behind him. Velocity had nothing to do with it. And again, that's a very easy throw to make. But Bowler seems to be struggling a little bit, Steve. Maybe he's trying too hard because at this point, with the great field position, and here we are with nine minutes remaining in the half, certainly he should have his rhythm by now. Third down and ten. Two receivers out to the right. And here's Bowler. Pumps. Wanted to go for it, and he's taken down. Fred Wakefield for Illinois makes the sack. And with that sack, he ties Mel Agee for number six on the all-time Illini sack list. 
We asked Fred about Mel A.G. yesterday, and he wanted to know who's that. And we told him, he said, hey, I know Simeon Rice, and Simeon Rice has the all-time Illini record, 44 and a half sacks. So Wakefield has a ways to go. But the star of the game, Nick Harris is in the punt it away. And from midfield, a spiraling kick. Eugene Wilson will let it bounce. And Amazing. Cal has got it again. Simply the story of the football game. A 38-yard punt. Harold Pearson dropped it at the half-yard line. Simply amazing. You look at the numbers for the punts, and that's a 38-yard punt, and there's been a 37-yard punt, and that kind of thing. Well, one of the things that has to happen here is that they're going to have to do a better job of blocking the sprinter. As you pointed out, they've done a great job of being able to down it. Certainly a lot of that is Harris, but you got to give credit to the fact that the cover people have been outstanding as well. So Illinois starting from the one. Off the play action, Kipner will pass out of the end zone, and it is incomplete. You think about, you know, it's a 7-2 to two football game. Illinois has started their last four possessions from the four-yard line, their own four, the four again, the three, and now from like the half-yard line. Well, I, I think again we give credit to the punter, but one of the things you have to we have to be aware of is the fact that Illinois' defense, and again, this is a defense that did not have a single guy, first team or second team Big Ten last year. They're kind of a nondescript group, but up to this point, California has been able to do absolutely nothing on offense. So you got to give them their due. And Harris will give credit as well to his return guys as this run is broken. Had one man to beat. It's Jameel Cook again. And here's what I don't understand, Steve. Here we are with 8.18 remaining in the half. We have yet to see Antonio Harris. I wonder if there's a situation where possibly he could be hurt because that was something that they're very secretive about. I, I assume he's okay. But usually, this is a point where you might see him. Dave Ryan. Well, guys, in week one against Middle Tennessee, Antonio Harris did dislocate his right shoulder. He's playing with a harness the last two weeks. Had the 100-plus yard game last week at San Diego State. The trainers told me yesterday he is 100%. We haven't seen him yet, though. Here's Kittner under pressure, feeling it. And eventually is brought down by three white jerseys at the 15-yard line. Matt Nixon, the first to get to him. Good coverage on the part of California's secondary. And again, Andre Carter is in the vicinity, but he has yet to make his imprint into this game as Nick Harris has become the complete marquee star, <laughs> as you pointed out. And again, Harris would tell you it's not all him, but he's a huge part of it. But the cover guys have been doing a very nice job on his unit as well. Again, they were ninth in the nation in net returns last season. Everybody, all the magazines, everybody loves Harris. And that figures just as they said, hey, we haven't talked about Andre Carter. He knifes through and, and drops the runner. Amazing quickness and speed. It's a little bit inordinate for a man who's six foot four and 265 pounds. They talked about him having a 37-inch vertical leap. Unbelievable. And of course, he he was a part of our, certainly the best defense in the Pac-10 last year, as you can see, documenting the numbers there, first in all the key categories. This year. They only they have five sophomores on their defensive group and they feel they're a little bit inexperienced. But up to this point, Steve, they, they look pretty good to me. Cal has some other sacks on the sideline. Mawuko Tugbayo is a, joined the team as a graduate assistant. He was released by the Buccaneers last week. He led the Pac-10 in sacks a season ago. The flags fly on third and 13. Looks like motion could be Tony Pashos, the right tackle. Prior to the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five yards penalty remains third down. Don't want to put it on Pashos. We'll put it on Brian Kenny. Steve, go back to Virginia Tech and Rutgers. Here's what it's like trying to stop Michael Vick. You're the last man between him and the goal line. You're the last man on the planet. Shaheed White of Rutgers. Hey, he got him down, but Vick is in the end zone. 28-0 Hokies. One had blowout in the making early just by looking at the two teams involved. This one also had a potential feel for a blowout prior to the game and even after the first series, but here we are. Six and a half left in a five-point game. Here's Kittner looking down the sideline. 
Great grab on tremendous coverage. Aaron Moorhead is down to the 45 of Cal. It's a pass play of 43 yards. Jameel Powell finally brought him down. What a grab, though, by Moorhead. And Jameel Powell was right with him. You're going to watch his left hand battle him. Now watch to the right of your screen. Now watch. He's right with him, puts the left hand out, knows where he is. Now right here. He misjudges and give Moorhead credit. He's the one that battled and was able to come up with the football. Huge play for Illinois, arguably the biggest that they have had here in the first half on the offensive side of the ball. Moorhead walked on last season, then earned his scholarship and makes the big play there. First and ten, some juice back in the Illinois offense as the sun creeps in. And that pass in and out of the hands of Josh Whitman. He was belted by Namadi Asamwa out of the defensive backfield for California. Here's Dave Ryan. Dave? Dave, take it away. Or we'll take it back. Bringing up a second and 10 now at 6-11 to play. 7-2 to in favor of Illinois as this Saturday morning turns into a Saturday afternoon here in Champaign. Here's Kittner now. will hand it off to Rocky Harvey. Not much doing there. Prior to that, the last 23 plays have gone for 49 yards. Yet that last big pass, seven yards fewer, just 42 yards. Here's Dave Ryan. Dave. All right, Steve, got the microphone worked out now. We know about the Jackson 5. How about the Jackson 3 with Illinois football? The offensive backs and brothers Mark and Bobby Jackson realizing their childhood dream playing on the same college team. They're joined, as you mentioned earlier, by their dad, Robert Jackson, of the Illinois receivers coach. Robert came to the staff last year, but before he did, he asked his sons, guys, is it okay if I do that? And they said, yeah, Dad, no problem, as long as you're on the other side of the ball from us. <laughs> Bobby Jackson, of course, had the interception called back after the penalty. Might have been a key play in the game. Here's Kittner taking off and taking on a pair of Cal defenders. Chidi Awoma was one of them, Chris Ball the other. Interestingly enough, in his freshman year, this is one of the times when he... Ron Turner was telling us that there was a situation where they were begging him to slide. Did you see the Jackson brothers? He was begging him to slide. In this case, he lowers his shoulder. Wants to get the first down. Kind of tough to, you know what, it, it becomes a, it becomes, amb you have ambivalent feelings there where on the one hand you're saying, hey, listen, self-preservation. On the other hand, how do you mute the competitiveness that makes him good in the first place? And the, the conversation was actually interesting. Evidently, Kittner said, came over to the sideline after Turner said something to him and, and said, hey, so you're telling me you don't want me to go for the first down marker there? And he said, yeah, that's right. Don't go for the first down marker there. So it's kind of comical, but that's a... As uh, Illinois, as Kurt Kittner goes, as go the Alina. Well, there are a lot of similarities between the head coach and the quarterback, and I think that's one of the reasons why there's such great symmetry in the offense. Antonio Harris has checked into the football game. He's behind the fullback, Jameel Cook. And here's Kittner. They fake it to Harris, and Kittner's going up top. And the pass just a bit too high for Greg Lewis. LaShawn Ward was there with some fine coverage, and there is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Flag on the play. Defensive holding against Cal. Holding on the defense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first stop. Andre Carter is matched up man for man with right tackle Tony Pachos, who does a very good job. Carter trying to get the outside, but Pachos, a 500 pound bench presser, just pushes him away. Kittner with plenty of time. Remember, Pachos earlier was the one who got beat for the safety by Paga. But up to this point, Carter has not been able to get into the backfield and get in the face of, Kirt of Kittner. Kittner this time will hand it off. And it's Antonio Harris showing the power game down to the 20-yard line, and Harris is in the game. I'm glad that Dave Ryan documented what he did because I was thinking this is ridiculous up to this point where you got a guy that has back-to-back 100-yard -back games. 
hasn't gotten in the game and obviously his first carry is a good one. I'm anxious to take a look at him because the people tell me they say you know Rocky Harvey he's they say he's fast but they say Antonio Harris is fast and big. Harris had 128 yards rushing the first game 117 the second and Jameel Cook is adding to his yardage this afternoon. Do we hail the stop? Well, Steve, remember last year, Jameel Cook was the third tailback behind Harvey and Harris, and obviously he wasn't going to see the light of day. So when they asked him to move to fullback, initially he was a little bit concerned, but he goes to fullback, catches the ball out of the backfield, knocks some people down. He's not your giant fullback at six feet tall. Yeah, sure, he's six feet. I thought he was about 5'11", regardless. 11th player to drive is a good one. Antonio Harris now. Asomwa. Made the stop. Just finishing up the thought on Cook. He's the one that paves the way. Watch number 34. He'll get a block for Harris. Cook is the one that'll get him out of the way. Harris able to cut back against the grain. Second down and two. And they continue to pound it between the tackles. Harris again, the ball carrier, Jason Smith. The stop, and we go again to the field, and Dave Ryan. Well, Steve and Todd, you guys talked about Antonio Harris and that dislocated right shoulder from a couple of weeks back. He still feels discomfort, but not severe pain. Now, his range of motion, stretching to make a catch, stiff-arming a defender, maybe head-to-head -head contact with tacklers, is a little bit difficult for him to do. So we'll see exactly how the range of motion is affected by that harness he's got on the right shoulder. Well, it's interesting, Dave, it's interesting you mentioned the right shoulder because it looks like his left arm is taped up, too. I wonder if something happened to him in practice. Quick hitter there to the fullback, Jameel Cook, and Andre Carter wrapped him up. Having had a separated shoulder, I can tell you that that does indeed limit your range. But I think the big issue there for him is as a pass catcher, and since he's primarily an eye back, it shouldn't be as big of a deterrent. Harris had three touchdowns a week ago in their 49-13 blowout win at San Diego State on ESPN2. They led 35-6 at halftime. Here it is, Harris again. Football's loose, still loose. And let's see who has it. I think it was Marcus Sullivan, their All-American, who was able to come up with a recovery. I think you're right. After it was lost by Asamoah. So many times defenders tell you that, the coaches tell you, Steve, they say, listen, listen, if you're not sure, just catch it. But of course, Asamoah is saying to himself, hey, it's 7-2, to our offense isn't doing much. Maybe I can come up with it and go the distance. Here it is, and there's the hit from the back. Now here comes Asamoah. He takes it on the on the fly, but it's stripped from him by Jameel Cook, the fullback. We talked about how well he was doing in so many aspects of the game, and of course, as a result of the change of possession, Steve, instead of it being third and goal, it's now first down and goal for the Fighting Illini. You might have seen in the replay there the name Butkus on one of those blue jerseys. That's not just a coincidence. That is the starting center, Luke Butkus. He's got an uncle named Dick. You might have heard of him. Dick, one of two players all time to have his uniform number retired by the Illini. Cal calls timeout. We'll take timeout. Hosted by Kenny Main kind of quirky but it's certainly interesting Illinois will get credit for a 98 yard drive with no points I take a look right here Mon Long from the back right here is going to make this is going to make the strip we'll get a chance to have you look at this a little bit later of course Illinois on the doorstep the result of Marcus Sullivan with a great recovery nice catch and of course Jameel Cook making the strip Making this a separate possession. Here's Kittner, wide open. Has time for a cup of coffee. Touchdown, Illinois. Steve, that looks like the exact same play they scored the first time, except this time the linebackers were able to get the tight end. But in being so concerned with the tight end, the quarterback is wide open. The defensive end has no place to go. is on to attempt 
the extra point and flags fly before Fitz could put it up. Illinois scored a touchdown on their first possession. Kittner to Josh Whitman. And now Kittner has just run in for a touchdown of his own as we await the word on the penalty marker and then the extra point attempt. So they mark it off. Be slightly easier. I say slightly. For Steve Fitz for the extra point attempt. And puts it through without a problem. Fitz now 14 of 14 on extra point attempts. Kurt Kittner rushes in for the touchdown. 14. Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan, and our fine ESPN college football crew from Champaign, Urbana, Illinois. And Kurt Kittner. Didn't exactly rumble in for a touchdown. Talk about, hey, we talked about uncontested touchdown passes. That was your basic uncontested touchdown run. Well, those numbers aren't particularly good. But again, you know, you talk about rumbling in. I had asked, uh, I'd asked Ron Turner, I said, what was he run the 40, 4 eight? And he goes, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? He says, uh, probably around five flat. But as Vince Lombardi once said about Paul Horning, he runs fast enough to get in the end zone. Certainly did there. Steve, this is this is a this is a terrible job on the part of the returner in this case Ward. He's got to come up and make that catch because when you get a ball that's spinning that fast, when you have a ball that's spinning that fast, that indicates the fact that he didn't get all of it, and that means backspin. Look at how fast the ball is spinning. He's waiting on it like a punt, but instead that's a free ball. Everybody's aware of it. It's an easy it's an easy recovery for Illinois because nobody is there. And that's what the coaches are trying to explain to him right now. Muhammad Abdullah is the one who's able to come up with it. And boy, oh boy, that's just an egregious error on the part of LaShawn Ward. Ward never touched it. It's almost like a 47-yard onside kick. And they get possession. Here's Kittner. We'll see what they do on first down. Here's Kittner throwing for it. And the receiver, Whitman, came back to the football but couldn't hang on as he and the ball bounced off the turf. Let's check in on what you can expect at halftime. Here's Brian Kenny. Brian? State Sports Center in game coming your way at the half, and we have world records falling in the Olympics. Chris Lee and Kirk talking about Florida and Tennessee. Michael Vick taking on the best of New Jersey, and the Buckeyes in a bit of trouble. We'll have that coming up at the half, Steve. All right, Brian, we look forward to that. Again, talk in the newspaper here. If Illinois wins today and Michigan wins their game, could see Chris, Kirk, and Lee here. College game day on site. Champaign, Illinois. Can't confirm, but that's what the paper said. The local newspaper here. Antonio Harris on that run. As the clock winds down, as we approach halftime, 2.20 to play. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Dave? Oh, yeah. Steve Antonio Harris certainly wants to make amends for the fumble heading off the field now but that fumble he had in the last possession prior to the Illinois touchdown he was the most upset Illini on the bench he really felt responsible for the near turnover to the Golden Bears he wants to get things back on this drive if he can. There you see the numbers on Harris to this point seven carries for 24 yards Kittner just four of 14 he's two of his last 11. And here's Kittner scrambling away. And his offensive line helps buy him time. Throwing for the corner of the end zone. And could not connect with Rocky Harvey. Well, again, this is great coverage in the part of California's defense. With the score 14 to 2, you're saying to yourself, what's the deal? But the field, they've been out on the field so much. Look at the coverage here by Pearson, just all over Lewis. Great job of the secondary of Cal. And again, I remind you that is the position that Tom Homo was. He was a defensive back with the San Francisco 49ers, so you would have to think that the secondary for the Bears would be well coached. Steve Fitz on to attempt his first career field goal. 
Pushed it right. No good from 34 yards away. And a, little, and a little bit of poetic justice, Steve, it would, it would seem that really the Cal defense deserved a break like that after that recovery of, as you pointed out, a 47-yard onside kick. College football for you today continues over on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. North Carolina against Florida State. The Seminoles are 66-2 and two against ACC opponents or Washington, Colorado. And as I mentioned earlier, Michigan takes on UCLA. That's coming up regional cover. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area over on ABC. And don't forget that two weeks ago, Alabama was ranked number three, played UCLA, thought, okay, we'll get past this one. They did not. Definite Heisman contender in Deshaun Foster, the tailback of the Bruins. Cal. And they hand it off to Joseph Echema. Only 10 of 35 previous snaps for Cal have been in their own territory. So they're not used to playing on their own side of the football field. Fred Wakefield made the stop. I don't know if California in this situation wants to be in a big hurry up situation anyway. It's 80 yards. I'm thinking that they want to run out the clock. So if they're going to hand off here to fighting line, it might be wise to take a timeout and get some field position. Uh, I know Cal can't be happy with two points in the first half, but they have to feel fortunate they're not blown out of this game already. And the quarterback bowler running out of bounds oh, and a flag got a late hit. hit. Yards. Robert Franklin might have put a late hit on him. The quarterback out of bounds. It happens so frequently, and I, you know, I want to give Bowler credit for being heads up here. But right at the last minute, he veers out of bounds, and of course, Franklin has his momentum going. Defensive players have to be aware of the fact that, look, you know, you got it right there, eases up, and there it is. Big collision out of bounds. You got to throw the flag on that. Now, this gives Cal the opportunity, Steve, truly to go into their two-minute offense, because now at about the 43-yard line, they're about. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. On the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. They're about 30 yards from getting into field goal position. It was a gain of nine. First down for Cal. Two receivers to the right, two to the left of Kyle Bowler, the sophomore quarterback from New Hall, California. And they go with the draw play. Wakefield to stop on Etchema. Your thoughts on that call? Well, I think that's a good call if they have a second play call and if they get right to the line of scrimmage and do what they need to do. Because a lot of times you can you can catch the defensive backs looking the other way in man coverage, turning their back, and it is a great call. In this case, they now need to hustle up with the clock moving with 40 seconds remaining. Cal has one timeout remaining. Baller throwing sideline, incomplete. Sean Curran, the intended receiver, couldn't hang on. You know, the combination, Steve, in fairness to, to Cal and the offense and everything else, you've got a quarterback here who is a freshman starter. This is his second start as a sophomore, and you've got a myriad of freshman receivers out there. So it's very difficult to have the kind of timing that some of the other institutions have with people that have been three and four years in the program. Official timeout is called. The other thing about Bowler is keep in mind, he only started one. Remember, he was a great defensive back later. He's really the reason why we have pro football today. He went on that barnstorming tour as a member of the New York Yankees. Here's Bowler flying across the middle. That one is complete to chase lineup. Well inside Illinois territory, down to the 35-yard line. Pick up 21. Best offensive play of the day. They caught them in a zone coverage, and Lyman, Lyman rather, does a great job of finding finding the dead spot in the zone. Clock stops with the first down. Now they wind it. And Cal has one timeout remaining. Here's Bowler stepping up. Eludes one. He's got plenty of green in front of him. Here's Bowler down to the 10-yard line. Takes the slide. And he was heads up to bounce up and call timeout. You're absolutely right, Steve. They had him spread out and right in the middle of the field. There was a lot of turf, and he was able to take advantage of it. 24 yards for Kyle Bowler, the quarterback. 15 seconds left. Well, that was my mistake, Steve. It, it looked like he bounced up and called timeout. Instead, now it probably spiked the ball. No, nope, he's going up top. Looking for the end zone. And nearly an unbelievable circus catch by Lyman. But Trayvon Waller was there on the coverage. And the flag is down, Steve. I think they're going to call Waller for getting his hands in a little bit too much. I was very surprised at that. I thought he was going to spike the ball and preserve the time. 
But of course, one of the tricks that people have been doing now, quarterback and receivers, they give everybody the impression they're going to do that, and suddenly they come up with that play. See, somebody was talking about this to outlaw the fake spike in the NFL this Pass week. Pass interference on the defense. The penalty will put the ball at the two-yard first stop. Right there at the end. As soon as you go up like that and you're is back as to the quarterback. The official is going to call face guarding. That's a great effort on the part of Lyman for almost coming up with the ball one-handed. But right there, that's a good call by the official. Wall over all Waller rather, right in his chest. Sean King had the fake spike for a touchdown for the Bucks this past week. Correct. So here we go. A chance for Cal to really make this tight going into halftime. Now Cal has one timeout, as you pointed out, Steve, so they can afford the luxury of running the ball here. They don't have to throw. I think it'd be a big surprise if they could run the ball. He gets tackled and called timeout, or maybe even get into the end zone. First and goal, one timeout left from the two. Here's Bowler. The quick fire and the throw incomplete with six seconds left. Sharon Arnold couldn't hang on. And that's a great call. It's a it's a play that was get a little bit of confidence. You kick it right here? Well, only because if you if you make the play here and you run out of time. Right, so how about an incomplete pass? If you don't roll out a quick hitter to the end zone. Well, that's what I'm saying, a fade yeah. route. Right. But then again, now you know what? I know this is a subjective thing. Yeah. But what about the hometown clock? When guy? the clock stops, right? right? Come on, that does not happen oh. in major college football time. Yeah. The NCAA would simply not allow for that. I see. All right, my bad. His last six seconds taking an eternity to play off, but figured to be a rather critical six seconds in this game. Two plays that come to mind right here, Steve. Either the fade, they can try the fade stop again, or what you do is you line up receivers on a one side, isolate one guy and let him run a slant. That, too, is a quick pass. Three receivers coming out to the left. Watch the top of your screen. I'm going to isolate it. Six seconds left, no timeouts. From the two, oh, here's the blitz. Looking right, it's batted away. Oh, my goodness. The touchdown. <laughs> Sharon Arnold. Oh my gosh. Fred Wakefield looked like he got a big hand on it. And it was deflected to Sharon Arnold. Touchdown. You know that this is reminiscent of the Monday night game. Those of you you watched between the Cowboys and the Redskins when there's a ricochet to Michael Wiley who made the catch and ran into the end zone. That's a great play. It's batted down and Arnold. I guess the word is Johnny on the spot. And Coach Tom Homo has to say to himself, man, we've been really unlucky. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what? It is better to be lucky than good. Here's Mark Jensen. Now, I'm not sure, Steve, here you don't go for two. Why aren't you going for two here? Interesting call. Here's Jensen. Puts the extra point through. Now, of course, the reason for going for two, then, is you go 14 to 10, and then that whole mathematical thing of 4-7-3 is into play. I'm not sure that this one point at this point is significant. We'll Eight plays, 80 yards, and they catch a break, and Cal will take it. And we will likely head to the locker room 14-9 at halftime. Well, this is this is interesting, this bunch. Is that the technical football term for that? Mark Jensen will kick off. Bunch? A bunch <laughs> formation? Well, I, I just thought it was interesting, that, that spread thing. All right, we usually have so many technical football kick, terms. Kick deep. Oh, well, you know what? Bunch, you know. That's good. Those regular folks can understand. Jensen. Low. And a chance for a return to Christian Morton. Morton out to the 30. He will be brought down. And we are at halftime. 14 to 9 in favor of Illinois. We'll see you for the second half. But first, we send you to Brian Kenny for Sports Center in game on the Holiday Inn halftime report. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here in Champaign, Illinois. The Illini leading the Golden Bears of Cal 14 9. Welcome back. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. And speaking of starts, how about the starting field position for Cal? In the first half alone, five times they started in better field position, better than their own 40-yard line, and yet hardly were able to take advantage of it. They needed a different kind of break to get going with the offense. It's interesting that it always happens in football games. You see a team that hasn't been able to do anything throughout the half, and then suddenly in the last two minutes were able to put something together. However, they were very much aided by a penalty. Rob Franklin, the linebacker for 
uh, for Illinois. You're going to see right here at the end of the play, he ends up whacking Bowler out of bounds. I really think that Cal was content here, Steve, just to run out the clock. Instead, now they have the additional 15 yards, and that ends up setting up this very bizarre touchdown where Bowler throws Wakefield, bats it down. Hey, great play. Oh, no, what? It wasn't a <laughs> Oh, Sharon Arnold, Johnny on the spot, as they say, to come up with a touchdown, a very much needed touchdown for the Cal Bears. So an offense really that didn't do a whole lot in the first half finds itself very much in the football game, down just five. And it's amazing the amount of band performers that were on the field at halftime here that they've been able to clear the field. Here's Dave Ryan. Dave? Yeah, everybody's gone now, Steve. That's the good news about to play football. Ron Turner at halftime with his fighting line. I pretty much an I told you so speech. He said all week to his team, do not look past Cal to Michigan. A four-quarter fight is what we're going to get, and that's exactly what we have here in the second half. As for Kurt Kittner, a little bit upset that Cal was able to get to him and make him make some bad throws. He was just 4 of 14 in the first half. He wants to see Kittner take his time a little bit more, use that pocket presence we talked about, find his receivers, take his time throwing to his wideouts. All right, Dave, thank you. And as Mark Christian Jensen boots it in the air, the second half is underway. Christian Morton is on the return for Illinois, and he's got the football out to the 25, and that's where Kittner and the Illini offense will start here in half number two. 14 to nine, the key numbers, some of the other pertinent numbers from your first half. Well, interestingly enough, as pointed out, Kittner only four for 14. One of the numbers that stands out to me is Cal starting to catch up in the total yards, and certainly that last drive had a lot to do with that. And it really doesn't matter in the final analysis, Steve, how you get your points. 14 to nine is a heck of a lot better than 14 to two. First play from scrimmage for Kittner. Single setback behind him. And Kittner is throwing. He's got nice air underneath the football. Looked like in and out of the hands of Greg Lewis with Harold Pearson on the coverage. That looked like a catchable ball from the naked eye. Pearson is having a tremendous game. Number 28 not only has been terrific in coverage, but remember, Steve, this is the guy that's been down the punts inside the five-yard line. Pearson's tried for stride with the six foot five inch young. Now watch he looks back. There's the hand. That's a catchable ball right there. Give Peterson credit Pearson rather credit for getting his hand in at the last minute. But that's a terrific touch on the part of Kitten on that throw. Have you heard of uh, Pearson's barbecue sauce? Kid has its own barbecue sauce. That's right. His dad develops and markets foods. And as soon as I can, I'm heading to the store to get some of that Pearson barbecue sauce. Heard it's great stuff. Now what's great stuff right now is the defense for Cal, particularly between the tackles. In the first two games before Illinois, they've been able to run rough shot over their opponents, as we've documented a hundred times here. You know, a hundred yard games. Hey, you like that? Hundred times? The point being is that Cal has been able to do that, and Kittner up to this point now, four for 15, has not been able to take advantage on the outside. Two receivers to the right on third and ten after the Jameel Cook carry. Kittner to drop to pass. And we'll just throw it away. And a flag back from the pocket area. It looks like Kittner is slow to get up. I think he took a beating there. Now it's holding. And I believe that holding is Andre Carter. And Kittner is down. And this isn't good. The Illinois player they're looking at on the 12-yard line is for Kittner. Well, Cal will refuse the holding penalty. Watch Andre Carter come up and watch. <laughs> that's holding. that's an absolute offense. tackle on the part of Marcus Sullivan, who can't get him. But the shot that Kittner takes, the issue there is watch the right leg. I'm not sure if the right leg doesn't fold under, underneath him a little bit right there. Oh, he ducks down. It's interesting. Tully Banta Kane had the pressure on Kittner. Take back Tostitos. Kirk Kittner being attended to on the sideline. He came off the field with the rest of the offense. That was a third down play. But here's the punt. Steve Fitz went up to get that snap. Oh. What a spiral of a punt. And it's fumbled now and recovered, though, by Cal's Chidi Oloma. All the way back at the 10-yard line. And Fitz had to be annoyed watching Nick Harris destroy everything in the first half, the other punter. Great play by Trayvon Waller to make the play so far down the field for a great punt net. But actually, what hurt Kittner, it appeared, may have happened on second down. Take a look from the back, and you're going to see Banta Kane hit him. This is the second down play. Now watch, he gets whacked, goes down on the knee. Now watch as he takes the ball out from center on third down. He's already limping. Take a look at the drops. 
He's already gimpy. Right there, he's limping. You can see him. Excellent point. And he really doesn't get hit here of any consequence, but you can see that he slides down. He's already hurting. They're working on the knee, and hopefully it's not serious, Steve. That was a 51-yard punt by Fitz. And he let the fumble minus 15 on the return. And around to Joseph Etchema, and he's got plenty of room. First down and more before Waller got to him. Pickup of 17. Let's go to the field for the latest. Here's Dave Ryan. Yeah, Kirk Hitter, guys, right knee sprain is what they're calling it. They're looking it over very carefully, trying to explain to Kurt exactly what happened. It looked like the knee joint may have been a bit out of place for a while on that knee sprain, but it's back in place, so no dislocation. They're trying to get him back in the game as quickly as possible, but it doesn't look too good right now for Kirk Hitter. Kittner key to one of the top offenses in the country. That's an understatement. <laughs> it really is. They're so dependent upon him. And their hopes of winning the Big Ten ride on Kurt Kittner. The defense trying to pick it up now. That ball is batted away as Bowler released. Mike Young made contact with the football and popped it up into the air. Kiana Aina, the tight end, was on a crossing route, and he was open across the field, but once again, Bowler's accuracy is in question. Can't seem to find him down the field. But as you pointed out, there he is. He's open. But getting just a piece of it there is Michael Young. Bowler had accuracy problems a season ago. He only started eight games a true freshman, completed just 39% of his passes. Much better last week in their win against Utah and struggled here today. Well, last week it's against Igbert Utah, there. I was going to say last week against Utah, he was 18 for 28 for 209 yards. Much better, as you pointed out. And for whatever reason, he hasn't been able to get his rhythm today. But again, we have to give kudos to the defense of Illinois. But now with some of the traps and the crossbuck here with the sweep, it appears that California is getting a little bit more involved in the running game and doing some things well here for sure. Salim Muhammad in the backfield. Rather, Etchema is the lone setback, I beg your pardon. As Bowler calls out signals at the line of scrimmage. Quick drop and fires. And again, a drop. Philip Pipersburg looked like Bowler hit him right between the numbers, the 88. Eugene Wilson on the cover. So frustrating for the quarterback. He sees, I mean, way on an island. They've got Pipersburg, their 10, 600 meter man, running the slant wide open. Ball hits him on at least one of the eights. Drops the ball, the ball gets to his chest. Ken Marger, receiver coach for the Cal Bears, can't be very happy with that. Nick Harris. His last five punts have been down at the Illinois 4, the 4, the 3, the 10, and the Illinois 1. Simply amazing. Harris standing at his own 26. With no pressure, gets it away. This one much shorter, but it takes a cow bounce. And another cow oh, bounce. Man. And another cow oh, bounce. Are you Simply kidding me? amazing. Down to the three-yard line. A 56-yard putt for Nick Harris. Well, you pointed it out, Steve. This is the guy. This is the guy who has been the star for them, Nick Harris and his punting. But let's also give some credit here, not just to Harris, but to his cover people in particular, in particular, Harold Pearson and David Watts. There's the ball down by Clotchy. And here comes Watts, who's going to pick it up. And then, of course, Pearson, we just pointed out, number 28, hustling. This one's just inside the 10. Here's the one. Nice catch before it goes into the end zone. And once again, down inside the five yard line. Here it is, Steve. Down at the 4 4 3 10 1, and now the 4 again. Unbelievable. Antonio Harris on that carry, but he received the football from Dustin Ward, the redshirt freshman from right here in Champaign. Talk about pressure being a local kid and filling in for Kurt Kittner. Dave will keep us posted as to his status, Kittner, for the rest of the game. Steve, the veteran offensive line, now the pressure is on them. They need to reestablish that running game that's been so dominant in the first two games to take the pressure off the young quarterback. Dustin Ward sends the man in motion. As you would expect, they'll stay on the ground with that running game, and it's on to Antonio Harris. And he's out to maybe the six-yard line. Update time. Sports Center in game with Brian Kenny. Steve, we go back to TCU, taking on Northwestern, nationally ranked TCU, and with Damian Tomlinson getting it done. Going 23 yards on this one, 24 to 7, TCU leading Northwestern. Thank you, Brian. And there is Kurt Kittner sitting this series out. 
And hopefully that's all he'll have to sit out. He looked okay coming off the field, but then upon examination started checking around his knee, and that's when you start to worry. Again, they keep it on the ground. Again, it's Antonio Harris. Burt Watts made the stop from his strong safety position. He's going to be a little bit short, Steve, and once again, Cal more than likely is going to have excellent field position. But frankly, they haven't taken advantage of it. I mean, if you think about it, the five times outside their own 40, they weren't able to get anything. And of course, when they finally did score, Steve Fitz, under some pressure, punts it away. It's LaShawn Ward, who had a bad turnover early in the first, early in the first half. And it's down at about the 46. So again, they'll start across midfield after the 36-yard punt. Let's go to Dave Ryan again. Dave. Well, guys, right now, Kirk is being disrobed, literally. They are taking off his game pants and some of the pads to try to get a right knee brace, which will help immobilize his sprained knee and try to get him back in the game. They've taken an ace bandage wrap. That's going to go on there. The ice is off. And right now, they're going to try to get Kirk Kittner back in the game with the knee brace. The mood on this bench and with this crowd, guys, down here is so somber when Kirk Kittner was down after being injured you could hear a pin drop down here it's something else they really love this quarterback here in Champaign excellent work Dave not easy getting injury news out of the Illini especially when it comes to their star quarterback handoff Etchema try on the right side takes out a linebacker helmet to helmet as he pushes it inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line Trayvon Waller was there maybe the helmet to helmet stop Again, an emphasis on the running game. Tom Homer realizes they're only down by five. Plenty of time left. And, of course, Bowler has been struggling. Why not try and establish the running game, get them back on their heels to set up the play-action pass? Out of the eye. They hand it off to the left side. And a flag flies on it. Again, it's Joseph Etchema. And this is going to be costly for California because this is going to be holding, and it's going to move them back 10. They just have not been able to get yardage in big chunks with their offense. This has to hurt him. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty on the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Langston Walker, the left tackle, has the deft grip on Washington. You can see right there. The official drops the flag, and that's particularly costly because that's a spot foul, Steve, so that was actually in the backfield. So now, second in a million. Walker is at three-year starters. Regina goes 6'8", 335. You got to figure the NFL folks will be looking at him. Two receivers out to the right. Here's Bowler to throw and fires the fastball. Could not connect with Phillip. Third down and 19. Less than 10 to play in the third quarter. From the 48. Here's Kyle Bowler. Throws it out into the flat. Could not connect with Philip Pipersburg. And again, close, but just off the target. And I guess some of the pressure is taken off of the Cal offense when you know that you can punt with Nick Harris. Well, again, if the star of your team is the punter, that doesn't bode well. And again, <laughs> we, we have to give credit to Illinois' defense. Everybody talked about their offense. Now they're in some sort of strange alignment here trying to get... I don't know why they'd be strange. They've done so well up to this point. They're not going to get anything 19. Fourth and 19. Six of the seven punts have been downed inside the 20. Actually, inside the 10. Inside the 20 is the traditional category, but all six of those have been inside the 10. High snap. We'll see how it affects him. Not this time. It'll be inside the 20. That is, wow, return. They tried to return it. Eugene Wilson at the 11, a 40-yard punt. Zero on the return. What, what, 11 yard line? Shoot, that's tons of breathing room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, com considering the way they've been backed up to this point, and we await the Illinois offense. Let's see if it's Kurt Kittner coming back. No, it is not. He's evidently not ready yet. 
Dustin Ward leads the offense back out on the field. Something else, Steve, is that when you've been hurt for the first time, and I, I certainly do know Kirk Kidner's injury history, but you're so unsure of yourself, and everybody around you is telling you you're okay, and you know very well, I, I don't know, I'm not, I don't feel okay. Ward throwing his first pass of this game. It is complete to Aaron Moorhead, and Moorhead might have extended for a first down. Let's get more from Dave Ryan. Dave. Well, as you and Todd well know, Steve, when you don't have your helmet with you as a quarterback and you have the headset on, it's not a good sign. A moment ago, Kirk Kittner told the trainers it felt like there was some movement in his kneecap. It's still very painful, even with a brace. He was not able to really set himself to throw, didn't feel comfortable taking snaps on the sideline. He is out indefinitely. All right, Dave. That's Kittner not having a great day when he was in. He was just 4 of 16 for 73. But he's an outstanding quarterback. He does have a touchdown passing and a touchdown rushing. Scott Fujita had the pressure there on Dustin Ward. Scott Fujita says, all right, welcome to football. All he'd been doing is handing off to that point. The one short pass, this time Fujita drops it. Gives Ward a chance to get a little collision. Now he says, okay, I'm a part of this now. Out of the eye formation, you would expect they would keep it on the ground, and they do here. The handoff to Rocky Harvey. Burt Watts made the stop. Steve, remember that Illinois had been so dominant in the first two games. 112 yards rushing is all they have up to this point. And remember, coming into this game, they'd have been averaging over 270. An average of 446 yards total offense and 42 points, the average, in the first two games. Today, a different story. Harvey's first four carries, 19 yards. His last six, nothing. Zero. So they go to the end. Oh, and a great effort by Greg Lewis to go up and try to bring down the Dustin Ward pass. Well, they had what they wanted in terms of protection. They shielded Ward extremely well. Lewis right down the middle of the field. The ball is just a little bit too long. He lays out but just can't quite come up with it. And again, in fairness, Ward is not getting the same number of repetitions as Kittner working with the first group. Deshaun Ward is back deep to receive this punt. And takes it for 44. Avoided one hit. And is taken down after a one-yard return and a flag. And again, another block in the back, this time by James Bethea, who hits Waller in the back of the 45-yard line. That's going to hurt Cal's field position. They'll mark it off as we get the call. Illegal block to back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First up. Well, tomorrow on the ESPN Family and Networks, we're all about Dan Marino. It starts at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Classic. Highlights of his career, including the 82 Sugar Bowl, in which he had three touchdown passes and some other great games from his Miami Dolphin NFL days. Holds NFL records for career yards and touchdown passes. To order ESPN Classic, dial 1-800-CLASSIC or your cable provider. And of course, we'll have his retirement ceremony. His number retired in Miami tomorrow night on Sunday Night Football here on ESPN. And that pass for Igber, the high pass. He brought it down, got clean, but stays on his feet. How about the effort by 5'8", Joe Igber? He was banged around by Bobby Jackson. Steve, this is great discipline on the part of Illinois' defense. They go with the misdirection, come to the right, they adjust to the misdirection, and then he throws back against the grain. There, Illinois is still where they're supposed to be. Great job by the defense there. And again, even on that, what would appear to be a relatively easy pass, considering he's just off the mark. Igbert made the catch, but he had to go up and get it. Igbert trying to keep it on the ground. He's at the 30. Brandon Moore made the stop. The tackle. Brandon Moore, number 96, was considered the most improved player on the Illinois defensive front. Actually, the entire team. Coaches raved about his work ethic. He was able to stuff Igber on that play. Brings up a third down and 12. Again, lots of motion out of that. Cal offense, now they're set. 
play action off the draw. Here's Bowler stepping up and looking for running room. Gets a couple of good blocks. And looks like he'll come up just shy of the first down. Robert Franklin brought him down. Well, I didn't know that Bowler was considered that mobile, but he's done an excellent job of breaking out of the pocket. He's got a good presence, even though he's inaccurate. He was just about to get sacked, breaks away. But as you pointed out, Steve, he's going to be just one yard short, and uh, I think Nick Harris is going to punt. <laughs> and probably do a great job at it. Harris is back. Bowler, by the way, you mentioned his mobility. He is Cal's leading rusher today. Four times he's taken off. For 38 yards total. Eugene Wilson is back deep. Harris puts wow. this one in the air. Another beauty. Wilson, the fair catch. And so Illinois will start at the 12 yard line after the 45 yard. Main right ankle on the same play. He's going in for x rays right now. Thank you, Dave. Keep us posted. Dustin Ward at quarterback gives it to Rocky Harvey. And we get an update now. Sports Center in game with Brian Kenny. Brian. Steve, Toledo took out Penn State. Now another MAC team, Miami of Ohio, testing Ohio State. Mike Bath to tie Buxton, 23 yards. It's now 20 to 16. Buckeyes still lead. Next, we got a look at Marshall last week at Michigan State. Gotta love the MAC, an up and coming conference for sure. Earning more and more respect, it would seem, each Saturday. Becoming the Mac Daddy of conferences, I guess. Guess you could say that. If you insist. Here's the pass out into the flat from Ward. Walter Young, the intended. I, I know I'm being repetitive, but it seems as if the onus is upon the defense of Illinois, and they've really risen to the occasion, considering that they're a bunch of non-stars in that group, Steve. Off the draw to Jameel Cook, the fullback. He continues the second and third effort out to the 20-yard line. Sean Paga made the stop earlier in the game. In case you missed it, Paga had the safety when he sacked Kirk Kittner in the end zone. Terrific effort on the part of Cook, but still a little bit short. And again, Cal should be in a pretty good situation. Iwoma is back deep at his own 45, and here's Fitz to punt it away. Like off the end of his foot, Iwoma on the 43. Cutting inside, just shy of midfield after the 36-yard punt. We talked about Bowler and his ineffectiveness up to this point. Lack of need to be a little bit more fair to him in terms of the fact that he has struggled. And I pointed out his inaccuracies, but there you see 10 for 25. A lot of that the result of the front four pressure put on by the Fighting Illini. And with Ludwig out and injured, a true freshman is the set backup for Ludwig, Marvin Phillip as they try the right side with Salim Muhammad. Bowler barely got that handoff. Robert Franklin. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that his legs aren't exactly, they've got to be less than 100% too. You saw him hand the ball and fall down. Bowler might be a little breezy himself. On second and seven, they hand it off to Muhammad, nothing doing. He's met in the backfield by Terrell Washington. Well, if you like defense, folks, this is the right place to be. Terrell Washington knifes through, drops to the backfield. They should, they should bottle that one for later, Steve, because twice now, Illinois, remember, with bootlegs with Kittner was very effective. A naked boot of the tight end coming around could be very effective for Cal, maybe in the fourth quarter. Third down and 10. We've talked about the field position ad nauseum, but, you know, when will Cal take advantage, slash, when will Illinois finally get burnt by it? It doesn't appear it's going to happen here. Third down and 10. Two of 12 on third down conversions. See if they can pick up one here. Screen out to the fullback, Pana Famolina. And it's not all that close, and he'll have to punt it away again. Trayvon Waller, the best of the DBs for Illinois, came up to make the stop well short of the first down marker. Steve, just, just for conversation's sake, you might say to yourself here, you know what? Why do we keep doing this? Why don't we give it a shot here, fourth and three? But of course, once you give up that field position, that could give Eugene the Illini some the momentum. And your best player today has been your punter, so you might as well stick with him. Nick Harris is set to punt, standing at his own 42. Eugene Wilson is back deep for Illinois at the 10. A little pressure. 
A very high, short punt that will be fielded by Eugene Wilson. And he runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line flag on the play. Steve, he put his hand up for a fair catch. Now, what he's going to tell the official is, no, 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 it was the sun. I was trying to shield my eyes from the sun. And, of course, Nick Harris is going to be happy about that, too, because that was the first one that was going to be outside the 20. <laughs> now this will force them back. But there's also a flag down at the 44-yard line at the line of scrimmage. And I'm sure Harris probably said, hey, that's fine. That wasn't a very good punt on my part anyway. I want to do it again. We'll get the call. 2.52 to play. Hasn't been a well-played football game, but it has been entertaining slash interesting. A lot of things going on here in Champaign today. Well, most importantly, it's still 14 to 9, and anything can happen. Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the kicking team. Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the receiving team. Both penalties will offset. There was a second dead ball foul, delay of game on the receiving team. Five yard penalty, first up. Well, that delay of game is actually one of those situations. He's second, the game is tomorrow. <laughs> it's Cal. Everybody here is talking about the Michigan game one week from today. Well, as interesting as some of the documentation, I took a look and it said, first sellout. And I thought, really? We're going to do a sellout? <laughs> and of course, they said, well, uh, no, it's against Michigan next week. And so there was a very real danger, I think, on the part of the team that they were looking past them. But of course, they have to make sure, or for whatever reason, when they're going against Michigan, that they get their regular quarterback back. And here is Dustin Ward firing and overthrowing his intended target, Aaron Moorhead. We saw Ron Turner yesterday, and he came into the room, and he was in a, he was in a bad mood. And we, we said, hey, what's going on? What's wrong? And he said, well, I just came from our quarterback club luncheon, and I got 500 people talking about the Michigan right, game. Right. And we asked a bunch of the players, hey, you know, do you guys know who's next on your schedule? And and give credit to the fullback Jamil Cook said no I don't know of course he's far from telling the truth but he said no I don't know who's on our schedule next week yeah right everybody's focusing towards that Michigan game as the handoff goes to Jamil Cook but the Michigan game really only important if you win this game if you're three and all going into that game every single player and every single coach we asked we asked the same question, which was, are you looking past Cal? And they said, absolutely not. Well, whether they were or they weren't, they are in a dogfight. And a big reason for that is the Cal defense and their punter. If, if Cal could generate any kind of offense at all, they'd be up by now. And speaking of Cal, we asked Tom Homo, their coach, do you know who's next on the Illinois schedule? And he said, absolutely, Michigan. <laughs> He's hoping to use it to his advantage, that maybe they would overlook Cal. Maybe this was a letdown spot. Of course, Illinois scored a touchdown on their first possession. Since then, haven't shown much. Here's Aaron Moorhead. Nice job of coming back to the freshman quarterback's pass. Dustin Ward complete for 26 yards. Moorhead has had himself a nice football game. And LaShawn Ward, for whatever reasons, the corner has no idea. Give Ward credit. The pocket starts to crumble, but he hangs in there and gets the ball off. Despite the, well, he actually fell down. But watch, Ward, for whatever reason, just gets completely lost. You can see he looks up and doesn't see anything. Moorhead is having a terrific game, Steve. Three big catches for 80 yards. On first and 10, go back to the ground game and try Rocky Harvey on for size. Was he on the ground? Yeah, Cal thought they might have had a fumble opportunity there, but Harvey was down, and the clock continues to spin. In the final 90 seconds of quarter number three. Well, as we had pointed out, the, the last two games have been just unbelievable for both Harris and Harvey. The numbers they've been able to put together in the first two games. Look at that. Eight yards of carry for Harvey and f more than five and a half for Harris. Now today, take a look at the difference. The yards per carry. Very poor. And again, credit goes out to that front seven. Okay. Harvey makes one man miss. Makes another miss and can't beat a third man. It would have been six. Rocky Harvey down to the 30-yard line after the 25-yard pickup, his best run of the day. Asomwa had the opportunity to bring him down and could not. Prior to that 25-yard run, Harvey had just 22 yards rushing on 12 carries. And Asomwa is the guy who's going to come up from the free safety. Take a look. Here he is right here. He comes up to fill the gap, but he misses. And the results of missing, here's all the green that is in front of him. So just as we were talking about the fact that they were having a hard time running the ball, they get a big play. 
And they stay on the ground. This time they change it up to Antonio Harris. Final 40 ticks in quarter number three. 14-9 in favor of the Illini, who are without their injured star quarterback, Kurt Kittner, in case you're just joining us late. A knee injury, and we will keep you posted. Dustin Ward in, and there is a look at Kittner and the brace on that right knee. Ward will put it back on the ground to Harris. He breaks the tackle, takes on another tackle, has a first down and more. He's down to the 20. Asomwa had a chance at him there again and brought him down. Well, Asomwa was able to take him down, but not before he gets that additional yardage. Talking about the strength of Harris, he showed it there. Running through Asomwa for the additional three yards to get the first down. Seven seconds to play, and they will not get a playoff before the clock shows zeros on the third quarter. We're headed for quarter number four in a five-point football game. Come on back. First meeting since 1974 between these two schools. In fact, that was Cal's only win in the all-time series. They played each other six times behind Steve Bartkowski. The Golden Bears won 31-14 here. They put it on the ground to Antonio Harris. Andre Carter and Naomi Asomwa made the stops. Very important here for Cal to force them into a field goal. And you know, Steve, even if it is a chip shot at this point, based on the kicking experiences of both sides of the ball, it's anything but guaranteed. Remember, Fitz already missed from 34 yards. And he actually, he's never hit a college well, was, field goal. Yeah, it's his first try. So he certainly has to be a little bit unsure of himself. Here's second down and six now. Play action. Ward looking for the corner of the end zone. Had a man just overthrew Aaron Moorhead by a foot or two. Harold you, Pearson running step for step. You mentioned that he was a walk-on. He is going to get a lot more playing time if today is any indication. Nice little fade move because he makes him look like he's going to the slant, has it to the outside, but again, here's the relationship. If you haven't worked with a guy, in this case, the second string quarterback, there's just no way that you can be sure on those types of timing routes. And there's Fitz, figuring he might be needed, maybe on the next play. Here's third down and six now. They put it on the ground to Harvey. Gets a yard or two, not close to getting the first down, and we will see Steve Fitz as he attempts to connect for the first time. Again, Fitz is the first Illinois player to kick and punt since Ken Miller did it back in 1953. Well, Will attempt the 33-yard field goal. He's already missed from 34. And this one is up, and it is good. And congratulations to Steve Fitz. The junior connects on his first collegiate field goal. 17 to 9. The Illini in favor of the 19th ranked Illini. They come into the game 2 0. Now comes in 1 0. And Neil Adams kicks it away. LaShawn Ward from the goal line will carry it out. But not far. Ward is dropped at the 11 yard line by Muhammad Abdullah. Well, you pointed out Steve Fitz, that was his first attempt earlier in the game that he missed from 34 yards. He makes this one from 33. Now watch after he makes it, the reaction of his teammates. I mean, I could be wrong, but it seemed like they were a little bit effusive in their praise here for this young man as he comes to the sidelines, patting him on the head. A number of coaches after that, about a half dozen, came over and congratulated him. See if I can tell you from experience having been around kickers. I can tell you from experience having been around kickers. You can hit all the 55 yarders you want to in practice. It doesn't matter until you actually do it in the game. Here's Cal now on offense, trailing by eight. That's an interesting number, Todd. Oh, I knew this was going to come back to Hump. Now oh, trailing by eight. We'll get into that after this play. They hand it off to Salim Muhammad. After Cal scored their only touchdown of the game, there was a certain analyst who was saying, hey, go for two here. Go for two here. And, of course, if they would have missed, 
they would be trailing by nine right now <laughs> instead of eight and that would make it much tougher to come back in the football game here in the fourth quarter my friend oh okay so you're the psychic network now. <laughs> <laughs> no i do it all along <laughs> I just forget to let you twist for a while. Twist Breaking the lid. Here's Fuller handing off up the middle to Muhammad again. Not much running room there. What has Cal done well offensively? Can you think of anything today? I haven't run the ball particularly well. Bowler has not been particularly accurate, and when he has been accurate, been a couple of drops on the, uh, the inexperienced receivers part. Really, the best of their offense can be summarized in the one drive just before the end of the first half. Bowler scrambles out, makes a nice run. Lyman finds a deep spot, dead spot in the zone. Bowler once again with a terrific run up the middle. And then, of course, they're actually lucky to score the touchdown because it came off a ricochet. Yep. It's been nearly total dominance on the part of the defense for Illinois. And as you pointed out in halftime, without the penalty by Franklin, the extra 15 yards, who knows if that drive exists as it did. Here's Bowler under pressure. Bowler going down. Kyle Bowler is sacked by Bobby Jackson, who came on the blitz. Ball today, Steve, and I will give you a dollar. I'll, I'll give you ten dollars if Nick Harris gets this one inside the ten yard line. <laughs> All right. I'll just hold you to that. Even though you did buy dinner last night. Here's a good punt, and it's a good one. Christian Morton. At the 45, and he is dropped. You know what? The Excellent play by James Bethea to wait for the two-yard halo and then nail it. We've got golf coming up. Let's get a feel for it. Here's Roger Twybill. Roger. Welcome to the Waynesboro Country Club. They only pen Roger, thank you. We look forward to that. The PGA Tour returning to Pennsylvania for the first time in some 20 years. Jameel Cook on the carry. He's shy of the first down, but it'll bring up a second and short. Actually, looked like they took a play out of Cal's playbook. Remember, early in the game, they went with that straight ahead, and then the receiver seemingly on the reverse. They fake the reverse and get the ball to Cook underneath and breaks the tackle. Makes a nice game. Roll reversal here, Steve. Yep. That is Cal with the Illinois field position and vice versa. Bobby Jackson, the man who had the big safety there. Antonio Harris, they keep it on the ground for the first down. Do you want to take a shot there on second and two? Well, I think the way, well, not with the inexperienced quarterback. And especially now, we, we, we pointed out earlier in the show the 308 pounds versus the 256 pounds. Really in the fourth quarter, that's when that starts to pay dividends. You've been beaten up and beaten up and beaten up, and now it appears that Illinois is finally starting to find some running room. And at an opportune time with a reserve quarterback. That average weight for the Illinois offensive line per player is larger than 11 NFL starting offensive lines. I'll give you a feel for that. And how about those moves from Jameel Cook spinning out, having himself quite an afternoon. Burt Watts, the strong safety, dropped him eventually. A little frustration on the part of Andre Carter coming into this nationally televised game. I'm sure that he anticipated having a big game, but instead they've done a pretty good job of neutralizing him. Watch the right tackle, Tony Pashos, pushes him out to the outside, takes him out of the play. Father stays with him, stays with him, stays with him. And of course, the frustration is evident as he steps back, pushes him in the face, and they start to go at it 10 yards downfield. And they stay on the ground, and they give it this time to Antonio Harris. John Clotchy on the tackle for Cal. Well, this is indicative of what they had done in the first two games against Middle Tennessee State and San Diego State. The offensive line, and again, we can't overemphasize this, Steve, five returning starters. All of the starters come back. And you and I have talked about this with a number of coaches, and they say if there's one key position where you want to have experience, it's in the offensive line. Hand off. Just a matter of time, Antonio Harris breaks one down to the 12-yard line. Old Miss and Vandy going at it. We get the update. Sports Center in game with Brian Kenny. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Ole Miss up 12-0 at this point, but here comes Vandy. Greg Zolman going back, hitting Messi Hasselanu. Into the end zone, 12-7. Right now, a little closer in fourth quarter. Thank you, Brian. I wonder if they still hang out in the Grove, even when Ole Miss is on the road. Boy, those are some interesting colors. <laughs> Here's Harris again, trying the left side. Andre Carter, the tackle there. Well, we haven't called his name much today, Andre Carter. And again, we give credit to the offensive line. He is a terrific player. But what happens a lot of times, Steve, 
is that when you have a great player like that and they focus in on it, you know, a, a tight end stays in, a back comes and chips on him, they double team with the guard and the tackle. A lot of times he's not going to put up the kind of numbers he did when he was single, single blocked. And so in that case, a lot of times the rest of the defense has to make up for it. Moorhead goes in motion. And they keep it on the ground. Antonio Harris cuts inside. He's inside the 15. Burt Watts took him down at about the 13-yard line. Clock continues to roll. Well, this seems, for, for Coach Turner, this seems a little bit conservative. But then again, take into account the fact, Steve, first of all, you've got the second-string quarterback now. And you don't want to turn the ball over here because a field goal now puts him up 11 points, which with eight and a half minutes remaining in the game would seem insurmountable, particularly with the ineptitude of the Cal Bear offense. Kurt Kittner, the knee injury reduced to the role of cheerleading for now. Oh, he's got his hat on backwards. He has no respect for the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Ken Griffey Jr. you said that. <laughs> Dustin Ward in at quarterback. And whistles and flags and everything but a play. Please stop. Well, that's the byproduct again of the Five inexperienced the quarterback. Too much Going time. Game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Let's go down to the field and get the update from Dave Ryan. Dave? Now, Steve, we're seeing the Kurt Kittner roll now reduce the signaling in place. Some of those are hot signals or the real signals. Some are decoys. So the two backup quarterbacks are relaying in some calls. Also, the relationship between Ward and Kittner in game is kind of interesting to watch. He's trying to help Dustin as much as possible. Dustin, as you guys pointed out, just a redshirt freshman. Similar to last week when we had Ryan Van Dyke and the true freshman from Michigan State, Jeff Smoker, have to fill in for him. He's got to provide a supporting role now for the new quarterback. You know, I was thinking to myself as I was watching that quarterback, you know, they could have a great second job working with the deaf with all the signals, don't you think? Yeah, the hot signals. It's a good point. We'll discuss that more when we come back. Work in the city. Live in paradise. SPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. In a perfect world, everything would be different. And by the Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Illinois, if they can hang on, they will have won seven consecutive games dating back to last season. They'll won seven straight for the first time since 1983 when they won 10 games in a row. They would be off to a 3-0 start with Michigan coming to town next Saturday. And they see what they've done over the win streak to this point. Their average margin of victory doesn't appear like it will be there today. And I'll tell you what, they've been averaging 42 points in the first two games, and that would not appear of what it'll be like today as well. You know what, though, Steve? I, I would think that... Ron Turner would point out to his troops that this really is what they needed heading into Michigan. I don't think after those first two games where they blew those people out, that would be the right preparation for the Wolverines. A little adversity. No one will be reading their press clippings this week. Jimmy O'Cook carries the football inside the 20. Tully Banta Kane on the stop. Now this is this is this is going to be interesting for this reason. Both field goals have been on the left hash. Now this one has been on the right hash. So Fitz to make his adjustment here is going to have to step just a little bit farther to the left to make sure he hooks instead of pushes. 33 yards again, Steve. Missed earlier from 34, made the one from 33, and this one is no good. That's what I was talking about in terms of pushed right. He missed one right, and then he barely made it inside it. So he's going to have to make some adjustments here in terms of his steps. And, of course, you can see the animation on the sideline of the Bears and then the instruction given to Fitz. I mean, what is there to say after the ball is gone? You know, make the move, take your step. That's too late. Immediately following college football here on ESPN from Champaign, Illinois. Here's Kyle Bowler. Missed field goal. We'll see how it turns out. Still an eight-point deficit for Cal. And Sharon Arnold, who got the lone touchdown catch of the game for Cal off a deflection, makes that reception. Steve Hagan, offensive coordinator for Cal, has a little pressure on him here with 7.17 remaining. It would appear that everything that he's pulled out up to this point, Illinois has been able to defense. Now they need to be a little bit more creative and come up with some things that Illinois has not seen, or rather at least execute better. 
They hand it off to Joe Igber. The best birthday present you could give Steve Hagan would be a touchdown here and a two-point conversion. Hagan, the offensive coordinator, celebrated his birthday yesterday. His 39th birthday. Happy birthday, Steve. Second and nine. We'll see what he has to call here. Everybody who knows about next week's game for Illinois with Michigan coming here, Cal will play at Fresno State before going back home to take on Washington State. Here's Bowler looking left, pumps and throws, going for it. And a flag, there it is. Igber, the intended receiver, Jackson with him step for step, but must have gotten too close. Well, it's interesting there because once you're that close and you have the sideline, Jackson didn't need to be quite that aggressive. What you preliminary signal is against Illinois. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first stop. There you have it. And another Big Ten team in action today. Let's get the latest from Brian Kenny. Brian? Steve, this was the big upset last year. Cincinnati over Wisconsin. And Cincinnati giving them problems again. Deontay Kenner to Ladarius Mann. 13-10 Cincinnati. Jamar Fletcher, Michael Bennett, both serving suspensions for Wisconsin, Steve. Brian, thank you. They continue to juggle their lineup through those suspensions. Let's see if they can be sparked by the penalty. Talking about Cal here as they hand it off to Etchema. Remember, the one touchdown Cal did get, well, that drive was greatly aided by a penalty. A late hit call on Robert Franklin, the Illinois middle linebacker. Steve, the first two games this year, Illinois has yet to allow a point in the fourth quarter. Obviously, the Bears would like to change that. Just across midfield, on second down and seven. Loose football momentarily. Terrell Washington had the pressure on Kyle Bowler, the quarterback who recovered. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Dave? Steve, the Cal football family is very close. In fact, some of these items in Berkeley are some of the hottest items you can get. Now, on Cal, they actually had to go through the NCAA and the university to make sure the logo was registered and signed up. We'll tell you more about it right after this play. All right, Dave, thanks. Third down and 13. Two receivers out to the left. Bowler off play action, steps up and fires. And overthrows everyone. James Smith, the intended receiver. There was double coverage there. Dave, back to you. So, guys, instead of being called the parents of Cal, they call themselves the Barrett's. And in fact, it's so popular that a lot of other schools have contacted some of the coordinators of their program out at Berkeley to see how do you get so many people involved. 300 people go to their post-game barbecues. The recipe, though, apparently, is a secret. No one's saying anything about that special sauce. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thanks. Some 600. Friends and family and parents made the trip from California here for this game. 20th punt of the football game. Does that make this a thriller, Todd? Does that qualify if we have 20 punts in the game? This guy. <laughs> That's amazing. Right, down at the 11 after the 44-yard punt. Hey, I think Nick Harris, no matter what else happens. To Roger, thank you. Another cool day here in Champaign as well. Game time temperature at kickoff was 58 degrees. Jamil Cook had the carry for seven yards while we were checking on the golf. So on second down and three. Antonio Harris on the carry there. This does not have the feel of an eight-point football game. Yeah, either lineman or defense guy. You know, Cal a touchdown and a two-point conversion away. And that doesn't get that sense. And a lot of it is the struggle of that young man. Not only the inability to find his receivers, but again, a protection factor, as we showed earlier. He's been getting knocked down a lot. They just cannot seem to get in rhythm. Steve, that last drive of five plays, five plays, is the longest drive they've had in the second half. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They've won the field possession battle, but that's about it. And they trail by eight. And Illinois, with Dustin Ward, will uh, throw the relatively safe pass. That one to Brian Hodges, short of the first down marker. 
Namdi Asamwa on the tackle. And a good play by Asamwa to drop him in his tracks. This is a poor job by Hodges of not getting up the field and at least getting the first down. Instead, he ran his route right at the line of scrimmage. Asamwa able to drop him. And now, once again, Cal with the opportunity for great field position. At some point, Steve, and this certainly would be a good point in the game with 3.15 in the clock running to take advantage of it. Very smart on the part of Illinois here to bleed the clock down. They can get it down to under three minutes before they punt. Down to five now. You see it lower left of your screen. But uh, Fitz gets it away. Chidi Ooma back at his own 31. Races up the middle. He's hit. Fumble. Football is loose. It's picked up, though, by Cal. LaShawn Ward. And so after the 48-yard punt turns into a 11-yard return, 2.50 to play. Here in the fourth time, Cal will open a drive. Ninth time in field position better than their own 40-yard line. That's simply amazing. And here's Bullock. Can't get away. Sack. Fred Wakefield, his second sack of the afternoon. That's four sacks for Wakefield on the season. And, of course, he's an interesting young man, someone who came as a tight end. That's a fairly that's a fairly common change to go from tight end to defensive end. He put on some 65 pounds with his quickness and athleticism. He is the pass rusher supreme for the Illini. Following the sack, second and 13. Here's Bowler out of the shotgun where he might be more comfortable. Bowler hit as he releases. And not even close. Chase Lyman, the intended receiver, seems like every receiver bowler goes to, there's double coverage on that choice. Our U.S. Army storyline, Kurt Kittner, in case you're just joining us, left the game early, sprained right knee is the word from Dave Ryan down on the field. And then Nick Harris, the story for Cal, and the other story for Cal, great field position, just haven't been able to do anything with it. Seven punts and a seven punts and a missed field goal. We knew that Nick Harris was going to break the record. We just had anticipated him doing it in one day. Third and 13. Will Cal waste another golden opportunity? Here's Bowler. Pumps and fires. Has a wow, man. Was what he a inbounds? Throw. He was. What a throw. Philip Pipersburg catch and finally a big play. 27 yards on the reception. Steve, this is the indication of a gun for an arm when you can throw the ball that hard going to your left when you're right-handed. He scrambles to his left. That's the kind of ball that if you throw across your body always seems to flow. That was on a laser. What a throw. That is the longest Cal play from scrimmage today, 27 yards, and it might be just the spark the Golden Bears need. That's got to give Bowler some confidence. Goes right back to the air. Short little inside screen to Sharon Arnold, who has the touchdown catch today. Not a whole lot there. But the inch closer, Jerry Schumacher made the tackle. Now, Steve, they're definitely in four-down territory, and this is an interesting point. They have all of their timeouts remaining, so they can pick their spots. So Steve Hagan and the offensive cognizetti for the Bears can really put together a plan here on the 32-yard line with the remaining three plays in this drive. The Illini defense, they've done it all day. Can they do it here in the final 90 seconds? Here's Bowler. Five, he's got a man. It's Sharon Arnold again, 32 yards. And finally, Cal takes advantage of their outstanding field position. A bullet from Bowler to Arnold, second time today. They hooked up for a score. Welcome back, Champaign, Illinois. We've got the potential for a fantastic finish. As Cal is getting ready to attempt the two-point conversion which would tie the game with a minute 26 to play. Two receivers out to the left. Kyle Bowler lining them up. Sharon Arnold is coming to the right, bottom of your screen. Now they sent him back in motion. Three receivers to the left. Sharon has, Sharon has the two touchdown passes. Now Arnold again to the right. He's looking for a ball. He's up in the air and knocked away. Two-point conversion fails. Fred Wakefield, for it seems like the third or fourth time today, gets the big hands up on the ball and bats it that way. But, Steve, this play looked discombobulated from the very beginning. Sharon Arnold with the two touchdowns clearly didn't know where he was supposed to be. Was it in motion? Was it right? Was it left? Finally, he goes in motion to the right. And as you pointed out, Wakefield up in the air, six foot seven, able to bat the pat down, and he's relieved. 
Coach Turner likes it, and of course, Wakefield has to say to himself, wow, I ricocheted it, it didn't go into somebody's hands. Tom Homo not very happy about it. And all that confusion came after a timeout, and the timeout not necessarily taking the set up the right play might be something else to that. Well, one of the things that happened is that, and I don't understand why this should happen, because down 17 to 9, everybody on your team has to say, hey, what are we down, eight points? So you know that when they score, there's going to be a two-point conversion. Instead, instead, everybody sprints out the field. You can see, look at Coach Homo saying, no, 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 wait, wait, you got to go back out. We're going for a two-point conversion. What are you doing? What are you doing? He's trying to get Sharon Arnold back on the field. He goes, what? Oh, we got to go, too. And so as a result of that, having their star player on the sidelines, they had to call timeout. But again, strangely enough, Steve, I don't understand why, given the timeout, taking their time to get set exactly with the play that they want, that Sharon Arnold would be as confused as he was. And the result is that Illinois was able to stop him. We have golf coming up for you just as soon as we are through here. This has turned out to be a great football game. Great golf action coming up for you. Third round of the PGA SEI Pennsylvania Classic coming up. And the onside kick looks like it's recovered by Illinois. Steve, that's really a poor job by the kicking team for Cal. Bobby Jackson steps forward and tries to make the play, and he fumbles it. As soon as he fumbles it, there should have been White should go after the ball. So Illinois takes over, first and 10 from the 41. They'll put it on the ground and keep the clock moving with Antonio Harris. Cal looks like will use one of their two remaining timeouts with a minute 17. We mentioned the golf that is coming up. Now let's get an update on the third round leaderboard and let's check in in Pennsylvania. Here's Roger Twible. Roger. Now let's send you back to the football. All right, Roger, thank you. Something about bogeys. We've had tons of bogeys here today. Not sure either team really deserves to win this football game. Illinois out the front by two with a minute 12 to play. Antonio Harris on the carry. Asamoa made the stop. Cal uses their final timeout, stopping the clock with a minute nine to play here in the fourth. Mr. Duffy, I've been here for over a year now, and I'd like to talk... I think the satisfying part, and this is where champions are made, is their ability to win when they don't play at their best. Face some adversity today, and you can be sure, in 69 seconds, this entire region will focus on Michigan. The backup, Dustin Ward, takes the knee. Now, Turner will be asked about Kurt Kittner's right knee, about a thousand times I would say over the next couple days now conversely even though there is no such a thing as moral victories Cal has day in southern Arizona perfect night for college football and interconference matchup between the San Diego State Aztecs and the Arizona Wildcats hello again everybody I'm Dave sitting along with former Arizona and NFL defensive back Chuck Cecil at the stadium night where Arizona and San Diego State two teams with two games under their belts this third game for Arizona Chuck an important rubber game of their three game non-conference schedule they've got to find themselves tonight before they play in the Pac-10 conference opener. Well, the, the Pac-10 has really had a resurgence this year, and uh, Arizona is going to have a really tough schedule from here on in. The Aztecs have been decimated by injuries. I mean, it's unbelievable the things that have happened to this team. So uh, hopefully Arizona can really build some confidence this evening and get ready for that Pac-10 schedule. All right. So much has been said about Arizona's offense, and that means a lot about Ortiz Jenkins so far, but closer examination reveals it's not all Ortiz so far. Well, Ortiz Jenkins Jenkins has, has been just getting punished. I, I, he, he has taken so many hits over the last few weeks, and he really hasn't had the